And here we go. We about to have fun. Laying it down here, we're going to show you some porno like you've never seen before. We got comb shots, money shots. We're going to blow some bitches' heads off. That's right. It's going to be awesome tonight. It's going to be dynamite. How do you feel about yourself now, stupid motherfucker? You could have had some pussy. Broadcasting live from high top stone head peak in the Blue Mountain Range. Over looking gorgeous downtown Dillsburg, Pennsylvania. It's the Jeff and Dan Show. It's Wednesday. It's 7 o'clock. It's time for the Jeff and Dan Show. <laughs> Oh, well, we didn't really have to do that. I'm Dan, the soft, white, subtle underbelly of the Jeff and Dan Show, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the show tonight. And what a wonderful show we have planned for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We decided to drag another sponsor on board to the Jeff and Dan Show. However, I'm not really sure if we should call it a sponsor, per se, or maybe label it as a kidnapping or a hijacking. But either way, we got a new ad we're going to play for you this week. Also, we have guests. I will let Jeff explain that here shortly. Ah, the captain has turned on the air sign again. So everyone, buckle your seatbelts, place your pipe in its upright position, fill your drink to the rim with your favorite flavor of Monster Brand Energy Drink, with or without an adult additive, and prepare for the Jeff and Dan Show. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you someone that has more talent in a leg than most people have in their whole bodies, but enough about Jeff's dog. Everyone, give a nice warm welcome for Jeff of the Jeff and Dan Show. Good evening, Jeff. How are you? Not too bad, sir. How are you? Good, good. Yes, we'd like to introduce our, our uh, guest for this evening, a good friend of mine. His name is Roger Arnold, and he'll be joining us for the duration of tonight's show. So, um, looking forward to that. we got a lot of stuff to talk about. I know he's got some things to talk about. we got some other stuff. And... We're going to play for the first time, gay or nay. Gay or nay. Yes, sir. Gay or nay. Well, you know, I'm excited about being gay or nay. <laughs> so uh, why don't we just why don't we just uh, hop right into it? Okay. You want to play that now? Yeah. Oh my goodness, man! You are really, really into it. Okay, here we go. Well, you it's said time to play America's favorite game, gay or nay. The rules of the game are very simple. Jeff is going to play a clip of a man speaking, and you must determine by however long or short it is whether or not that man is gay. Those are the only rules. Gay okay. or nay? <laughs> no, he's not gay. Stop it. All right, here we go. Okay. So we're going to do it. It's contestant number one. You must tell me whether or not this person is gay or not. That's how you figure out what you want in life. Okay. I'm going to play it back for you one more time. That's how you figure out what you want in life. As you can see, the clips can be kind of small. So you have to tell me whether or not that, that contestant is gay or not. That's how you figure out what you want in life. I'm going to say nay. Total hetero. Actually, he is gay. Ah! <laughs> 100%. I, I will not lie to you guys tonight, okay? This, this is on the up and up, okay? Every time I say they're gay, they're actually gay. If I say they're not, they're not. How do you know? Yeah, that was my next it, question, it's too. A, there's a code written into what, what I put in here. So each one of the contestants has a code in there, and I can tell what the code is. Yeah, it's either gay or nay. Is it like, <laughs> is it like gaydar? Yes, it's like gaydar, kind of, except it's written. Kind of not Gator. <laughs> All right, here we go. You ready? Let's try a contestant let's, number let's two. Let's try a contestant number two. Oh, that butt is fantastic. Okay, here we go. Contestant number two. Oh, that butt is fantastic. Okay. What do you he, think? he sounds like a flamer, but I'm going to go nay. I'm going to say yay. He is? Yes, he is a gay oh, man. Gee whiz, man. I know. Roger's up on you, man. One already. Come on. All right, here we go. The next one. I feel pretty nervous. Okay, here we go. I feel pretty nervous. Gay or nay? Nay. Nay. Yep, that's correct. Oh. It's nay. Yeah. Good, you caught it. I got one right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Gaydar's back online. In my early 20s, I was sexually adventurous. Okay, so gay or nay? In my early 20s, I was sexually adventurous. N nay. Yay. Yes. He's definitely gay. He was adventurous. Yes. What does that say? Yes. It means I've gone out and done crazy things. It didn't mean anything, but you know, you my, had to try. My thinking, if you were gay, you wouldn't be adventurous with sleeping around with men. You'd just be like, man, I need some pussy. No, I, well, whatever you want to call it. It's not going to happen. But, but, but <laughs> he's gay. End of story. Yes. Right. Here we go. Next contestant. He is absolutely obsessed with brunch. <laughs> Okay, here we go. He is absolutely obsessed with brunch. Gay or nay? He's as straight as an arrow. Gay. 
this time it's actually Dan's correct. Yeah. He's as straight as an arrow. Woo. The brunch threw me off. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, yeah. That that that's that's what I mean. And some parts of this game you have to kind of listen, and it's like. So, um, oh, and I should mention just real quick, there's the possibility that they are gay, but in a straight relationship right now. Okay. But you're not going to know that because I don't even know that. You know what I mean? These were clips that I pulled from people that were on YouTube. They're famous clips for the most part. And it it definitely says they're either gay or they're not. (laughs) So that's how we know that, you know, this is on the up and up. So let's try this next one. It can happen. Yeah. I hear. Okay. Ready? It can happen. Yeah. I hear. Gay or nay? That was Simon Cowell. He is straight. <laughs> nay, nay. You both said nay. Yeah. Or no. No, I said straight. Straight. I, oh, I meant straight. Yeah. Both yeah. of you mean straight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he is gay. <sighs> yes. If you listen closely in the background, you hear the guy sitting next to him talk. Yes. It yes. can happen. Yeah. I hear. See? There's a I, guy who goes, yeah. I thought it was Fred Rogers. <laughs> It's a beautiful day in our neighborhood. All right, here we go. I mean, back in the day, maybe. I'm too old for that shit. All right, gay or nay? I mean, back in the day, maybe. I'm too old for that shit. Gay. Or nay. He is gay. Oh, man, I really suck at this. I you know, man. See, that's what I'm saying. Nice it's blow. Very... D- <laughs> Next, we'll have Dan in there. All right, very good. Okay, here we go. A couple more. We got a, you know, a few more. Here we go. This is where I'm, like, not that adventurous. This should be these. Some of these should be nice and easy. Some of them are going to be I, a little bit difficult. I know that, but it scares me now because that voice to me is so obviously queer. Right. Am I this allowed is to say I'm that like, word? Not that adventurous. What's that? Am I allowed to say that word still? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. That's part of the Q and. <laughs> That's true. L G B T Q. Yeah. Oh wait. R S T U V. I thought Q was questioning. No, no, it's queer. Is it really? Yeah. Hmm. There's a state is called queer, which. I guess it's more like pansexual where they're not sure. Hmm. They're willing to have sex with pretty much anybody. Okay. They could be trisexual. You know, try anything. Dogs, trees, cats, whatever the fuck. <laughs> Did we determine who that person or what that was? Did you determine? This I, is where I'm like not that adventurous. I said he was gay. I'm going to say nay just to be against the just, grain. Just okay. He is gay. He's okay. gay. He's gay. There you go. got that one. All right. Here we go. Next one. I really liked him and was willing to do anything. Okay, here we go. I really liked him and was willing to do anything. That just screams gay. Gay. Not gay. Uh, Not gay. All right. Let's see what this one is. Uh, oh my God, it feels so good. Uh, uh, put it in me, Dad. Uh, I love you. Uh, okay, now we got to figure out whether or not this is gay or not. So let's just listen uh, to it one more oh time. Oh my God, it feels so good. Uh, Oh. Put it in me, Stud. Oh. I love you. Oh. Oh. Pump it that way. Yeah. Pump, pump, pump. Oh. Oh. We are definitely gay. Oh. Oh. We are definitely having gay sex. This oh. is gay sex. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. Is that gay or not? <laughs> it's straight, but he's being pegged. Oh, there you go. Hey, that could be. That could be. It's very much so. And the guy in the background going, ah, is him. Just like Darth Vader when he breathes and talks at the same time. Mm-hmm. He's like, this is definitely gay sex. <sighs> you know? <laughs> it's one of those deals. He's yeah. straight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Roger said, he's getting pegged. <laughs> you know. That's right. He's a cuck. What are you going to do? All right, here we go. Here's the next one. Because I'm friends with people who are really adventurous and tell me about some of the crazy shit they do. I'm like, damn, I'm boring. Oh, he's queer. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. You guys. You guys. I don't know it. whether I'm coming or going at yeah. this point, <laughs> so to speak. Neither do they. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Next one. Maybe when you first meet and you're not sure what it is. Okay. <laughs> oh, we know, honey. We Maybe know. Maybe when you first meet and you're not sure what it is. Um. Uh, he's gay. All right. Yeah. Yay. Yep. Okay. He's gay. That's correct. All right, here we go. Next one. Yeah, men are supposed to grow up to be sort of like you know the protector. He's okay. straight. Right. Yeah, men are supposed to grow up to be sort of like you know the protector. Yeah, straight. Yeah, damn, you guys got that. That was good. Good job. All right, here's the next one. I'm definitely a chess guy. <laughs> I'm definitely a chess guy. Straight. Yeah, straight. Gay. Ah. Yeah, unfortunately, you pal, you you jumped out on that one. So let's try the next one. Pulled my chin towards his mouth. Okay. Pulled my chin towards his mouth. Pulled my chin towards his mouth. Gay or not? 
I'm getting gun shy because I, yeah. what's obviously gay to me, right? Yeah, may not be, sounds gay. Sounds gay. I'm gonna say no, but it's because I'm gun shy. No. Okay. I'll say yes just because he is not gay. Oh, all right, oh, cool. Yes. See, I, I was just a lucky guess. When I'm when I'm done with this, I'll tell you exactly what the uh, where the um, these clips came from. Hmm. So that way you can you know hmm. if you want to take a look or whatever. All right, here we go. Next one. I don't know, but he started to come over to my house a lot. Straight. Straight. Yep. Straight. All right, here we go. Next one. Are you big spooning me right now? Can you say that one again? Are you big spooning me right now? Are you big spooning me right now? Um, I don't know what that means. So I'm like when you, gay. when you, when you curl up behind somebody <laughs> and you match the way that they're laying. I thought that was just spooning. That's spooning. Yeah, but the person that's on the outside is the big spoon. Uh-huh. The one on the inside is a little spoon. Okay. So <laughs> let's try it again one more time. Are you big spooning me right now? What is it, gay or nay? Gay. Straight. Nay. Oh, oh, yeah, very good. It's nay. nay. Okay. Nah. Yes. All right. Here we go. Next one. September came and I started giving him major bone. <laughs> September came and I started giving him major bone. <laughs> Gear straight. <laughs> Gear nay. 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 Very good. You guys are starting to catch on to my tricks, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> you're starting to be like, ah, you motherfucker. I know what you're doing. All right. Here we go. Next one. You're gay or you're straight. They don't think of it as like a, a spectrum. Okay. You're gay or you're straight. They don't think of it as like a, a spectrum. Okay. He's gay. Straight. He is straight. Ah. Very good. Yep. Good call. All right. Here we go. That's a big one. Everyone always thinks that we were together. Or it's like, mm-mm. Okay. Ready? Gay. One more time. Everyone always thinks that we were together. Or it's like, mm-mm. Gay. Yes, definitely. Both gay. Yes. Very good. It, it, what gave it away is the... Uh oh. Right at the end. No, no, she didn't. <laughs> Although I've heard millennials do that shit, and I'm like, what the fuck, man? Dude, well, see, they're, they're just appropriating culture. Yeah, yeah. Dominique Thompson. Okay. Dominique Thompson. Gay or nay? Straight. Oh, man, I'm really in the closet over this. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to say gay. He is straight. Ah, yeah, it was yeah. a 50-50 for me. It was, a, it was a 50-50 every time. <laughs> All right, here we go. Gear straight. Nothing wrong with a little bondage between two MILFs. Two MILFs? Two males. Oh, two what males. He thinks. Two uh, males. No, nothing wrong with a little bondage between two males. Nothing wrong with a little bondage between two MILFs. He says males weird. Right. I don't know why. It, it, it no. sounded like Bill, didn't it? Yeah. It, Bill, <laughs> now it's starting to sound like he's, he's saying nothing wrong, a little bit of bondage in between two meals. <laughs> <laughs> he goes all story of O and shit in the middle of everything. You have to wait 30 minutes. <laughs> so you don't cramp up right. and die, That's right? right. <laughs> Very cool. Gay or straight? Gay, gay or nay? Gay. Straight. Straight. Yeah, Gay. straight. He's straight. Straight. I yes. said straight. Oh, okay. You <laughs> what a shit. Okay, here we go. Next one. Top of the mountain, like hiking backpack adventurous. Gay. Um, Top of the mountain, like hiking backpack adventurous. You know what? He sounds gay, but something tells me he was a bachelor, so he's straight. He's gay. Well, you could still be a bachelor. Roger's got a better gaydar than we do. Because, dude, I, I'm, I'm with you half of these. You know what I mean? At least more than half. I'm like, there's no way. You well, know, like, it could be gay or straight. You're right? editing tricks I'm starting to become aware of. So. Oh, okay. That's cool. Well, see, there's some that are have tricks and some that don't. I think that's what's throwing you guys off. At least that's what I'm hoping. Okay, next one. My whole life is doing this chick stuff. He's straight. Yeah, I'll say straight. Yep, straight. All right, gay or nay? Me kissing another boy. Gay. Me kissing another boy. Gay. Straight. Ooh. Yes. And, I, and when I tell you what this is, you're gonna you're gonna love it. It's 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 fucking phenomenal. Okay, here we go. Next one. Shopping, uh, picnics in the park. Straight. Straight. Yeah. Straight. Very yeah. good. Good call. Okay, here's the last one. Okay. This hey. is it. Lay down. Okay. Here it what? is. Okay. This hey. is it. Lay down. Straight. Okay, this is it. Lay down. Straight. Yep, straight. Yeah, very good. <clears throat> All right, now, <clears throat> that is the end of the game. And unfortunately, oh, shit, you know what? I didn't even use these. That is correct. <laughs> I should have, damn it. I totally forgot. I, I built these and totally forgot to use them. Too That's exciting. wrong.
<laughs> you suck. Oh, I God. suck. A lot of dick. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, so here's the thing, man. A couple of these. Um, Shopping, one, uh, picnics in the park. That one came from a guy. It's the millennials, a millennial guy's way to get along with his girlfriend, mm. basically is what it turned out to be. Um, as a matter of fact, I will, I will get the actual names for the videos so you know exactly what we're talking about. Why does he need to get along with her? It says, meet the millennial boyfriend who does anything for his girlfriend. That's the name of that video. It's probably, all these are on YouTube, so you should be able to find them. The other ones, let me see if I can find them. Everyone yeah. always thinks that we were together. It's like, you're no. gay or you're straight. Dominique Thompson. There you go. Okay, that one. Are you big spooning me? I don't know, but he started to come over to my house a lot. That, that guy was on Guys Read Their Girlfriend's Old Diaries. Uh, That's why it sounds like they're talking like they're gay, but they're not really gay. Uh, That's why I threw those in there. Um, and then the other two, of course, are gay men answer steamy questions everyone is too shy to ask. And boyfriends see their girlfriends without makeup, which there was only one of those in there. So Boyfriends see their <clears throat> girlfriends without makeup. Yeah. Yep. It's two, it's two couples, and the guys had never seen their girlfriends without makeup before. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, dude. So they never slept together. I'm, I'm sure they probably have, but, you know. I mean, I don't you know. have makeup in the morning. Yeah. You would think. You know, I'm trying to think back back in my past and and, and also remembering my wife's listening. Right. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> I can't remember if a girl ever wearing makeup to bed. Not usually, yeah, because it rubs off on the pillow. Right. right. And I can't ever remember a girl hurrying up and waking up and going putting her face back on before <laughs> I wake up. Right. The bitch was a fembot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> she got her she face off. Good. Yeah, <laughs> that's just wrong. <laughs> I'd be like, no, bitch, no. <laughs> Back the fuck off. Yeah, <laughs> gotta get the good shit out. There we go. She won't come back. <laughs> oh no, wait. <laughs> we, uh, we're, we're gonna need some different screams. Yeah, Anyways. we're gonna have to get some eventually here. Yeah, here's a good scream. All right, that was a bad scream. (laughs) And then we added a new sound effect. I totally forgot it. And the winner is Roger. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you very much. He wins gay or nay. Uh, Okay, so what else we got, man? What do you got? Well, we got 42 questions we could play. Yes, let's do that. would be a great way to get to know Roger. Yeah, let's do that. You want to play 42 questions? Absolutely. Okay, do we have any 42 question theme song yet? Not yet. I'll be working on that stuff soon. I called it recurring events or recurring, uh, the hell did I call that? Recurring features. Gay or nay is now one of them. I can, supp- <laughs> I can supply a theme song. Here we go. Your dress is so short that I can see your labia. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an optical illusion. I can see right through. <laughs> and if I can see... Your labia, <laughs> then I'm sure your daddy can too. Oh. <laughs> but he doesn't seem to mind. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> All right, on with the game. <laughs> All right, man, here we go. 42 questions. 42 questions. Yes, sir. It's a real simple. That's for Jeopardy. I know, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> Yes, we can. Let's talk about sex, baby. Well, Let's talk about you and me. What? Let's talk about okay. I, it, <laughs> it won't be that one either because the 42 questions aren't always about that. It, it's going to have to be a total original. Yeah. 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 I was actually thinking about pulling down uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy's theme music because it's 42 questions and that's the answer oh, really? to life, the I universe. I thought it came from Monty Python. No. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> Douglas Adams. I'm out of the loop anyways. That's cool. 42 questions is a real easy game. I say a quick question, you give me a quick answer and we can tell if you're lying. You ready to play? I sure am. Okay. 42 questions. First name. Roger. Birthday. August 3rd, 1960. Oh, wow. Born at? Harrisburg Hospital. Grew up where? In Harrisburg. Went to school where? Uh, Bishop McDevitt High School. Cool. I, I, in the car ride down, by the way, I knew most of these answers. <laughs> really? Yeah. I thought you were cribbing for the for the <laughs> test. 
Steak or chicken? Chicken. Oh, wow, you're first, man. Yeah. You are first. Got to watch the red meat. Yeah. A lot of heart shit in my family. Yeah. Uh, steak or fish? Oh, uh, steak. Fish or pasta? Pasta. Soft serve ice cream or hand dipped? Oh, yeah, that's you, a hard you could go one. either way. You can go either way. I'm going to say hand dipped. Ooh, okay. Why? More variety. Yeah, you are right. More variety. These are the have you ever 42 questions question part. Have you ever lied? Yes. You're telling a lie right now. <laughs> have you ever stolen anything? Yes. Wow. Have you ever been arrested? Sort of. <laughs> sort of. Do you want to know? Well, yeah. <laughs> when I was 17, when I was 17, I got busted with beer at the uh, uh, Susquehanna Municipal Hall. I didn't even get a sip of it. Uh, they, they were they were lying in wait for us. <laughs> you took beer. That to sucks. The, you took beer to the municipal hall. Well, it was a dance, and okay. and my buddy who was I thought was smarter said, "Let's just sit outside in our car along the street and drink it. Nobody will know. <laughs> Nobody's gonna guess." He popped a tab, and the cops were right there. I didn't even get a sip. How did they know? I don't know. I have that no sucks. idea. I, did, I, I don't know. He cried to his father, and his father let him off because he was divorced and he felt Catholic guilty. My dad said, you're grounded for the rest of the year. Be glad I don't eat your heart right now. <laughs> Is that and I said, that's fair. You, you didn't get arrested then? Or you didn't get... I got taken to the municipal hall and held uh, until my dad came. And I just, they were like, read me the riot act. I said, yeah, okay. Sounds right. Yep. I got. I got to agree. In in your house back back then at that age, would you have been allowed to drink if you were around your father? No, no. So no. that was drinking was totally out of the question. I had to sneak. Okay, all right. Have you ever assaulted anyone? Yes. Hmm. 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 And how comes you haven't been arrested for it? Uh, because I did it in Catholic school and everything's hush hush in Catholic school. Oh, yeah, yeah that's we, true. Yeah, we know about that. Have you. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the hate mail from the Catholics. That's right. Have you ever hit and run? No. Nope. I, I don't mean people. I mean, like, another right. car. No. Have you ever had a dream that came true? No. Mm. Have you ever eaten dog food? Yes. <laughs> Have you ever gotten anyone else to eat dog food? No. What kind were you eating? Ah, good question. <laughs> I was in the bank teller line at uh, the old CCNB bank, or, or the drive through and uh, we knew the teller, and the teller put some snacks in through the, uh, the bin, and I immediately <laughs> thought they were candy, and I popped one in my mouth, but it was, in fact, a dog treat. Oh, shit. These don't taste like lemon. <laughs> Plus, they're really, they're really rough, you know, to, yeah. to clean that tartar off the teeth. <laughs> Texture shitty. Yeah. Why even put anything in tartar for with dog treats? They don't they don't chew. <laughs> well, when they're really hard, they're sort of forced to chew. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Come here, little shitter, some peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> They'll lick yeah. that shit off lick, anything, as Jeff that's, knows. That's right. Lick it off, damn it. <laughs> Have you ever picked up food off the floor and fed it to someone? Yes. Mm, <laughs> Me. Fuck, oh. we're not going to <laughs> We're not going near his house for any five second rule, man. <laughs> That's true. It depends. Yeah. It depends how much I paid for it. It depends how much is left. <laughs> right. <It> de- <laughs> have you have have you ever thought bad thoughts while in church? Oh, God, yes. Oh, me too. That's one of my... Oh. I, I have got to keep my... When I'm sitting in church or Sunday school, my mind drifts. And it's usually... Never mind. <laughs> uh, have you ever tried to make a deal with God? Oh, yes. Did, did, did you... Was, did I you, was successful. You made a deal? I won. I got the big prize. I was able to sleep till Christmas morning so I could see Santa. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> I pray, dear God, I'm so anxious. I can't wait. I can't sleep. If I don't sleep, my folks say Santa won't come. So please, Jesus, help me sleep. And within five minutes, I was asleep. So. And, and what did you do? What did you do in, in return for God? I just got toys. <laughs> I just got toys. Nice. I mean, I went to church every Sunday. I knelt. I splashed myself. I got a little wafer. It always stuck to the roof of my mouth. What more do I have to do? You know what? That does deserve a toy at least I think once so. a year. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever wished someone dead? Oh, yes. Uh, oh, wow. Are they still living? Yeah. Uh, 
Apparently your wishes don't come true either. No, no. <laughs> Have you ever shook up someone's soda without them knowing it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've done that. On purpose. I know you don't have any kids, so I'm going to alter the next question. Sure. Have you ever taken candy from any kid's trick-or-treat bag? No. No! No. <clears throat> well, I've not taken it. I have asked and been given, but... Well, you know what? You have to take that, and you have to tell them you're doing it in the name of, I'm preventing you from getting cavities, son. Uh so I am not doing this for me. I am doing this for you. Mm. Yeah. And then you get to eat all you want. I there was you doing it for Reese's. <laughs> <laughs> first job. Ooh, first job, first real job, Sam's Ice Cream in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. It doesn't exist anymore, was but it was hand-dipped I... ice cream. What, what, what is it now? Is it still ice cream it, joint? No, it, it had been torn down for a park, uh, car, uh, car dealership. Uh, but my it was there forever. My dad worked there when he was a teenager. Oh no way! Yeah, it was great. Uh, I mean, it didn't pay worth a damn. Yeah. We had to take them to the board of uh, labor relations just to get a nickel. <laughs> wow! <laughs> well, you got we, all the? Did you get all the free ice cream? Yes, we did. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, but we had to pay for bananas and coffee. What? Yeah, ice cream. Ice cream. I mean. Uh, it was a, a loss leader for them. Ice cream, they could, you know, they could give away gallons of it, and they'd still make a decent profit. But well, same way with coffee. Coffee is dirt cheap. Yeah. Well, it wasn't their specialty. They had to buy the little packs. You know, those cost money. And, oh, well. Yeah, and bananas. You know, yeah. bananas don't grow on trees. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Do That's you right. believe in UFOs, aliens, and have you ever witnessed one? Many. Uh, no, I do not believe. I used to believe. Used to believe? Used to believe, uh, but I used to watch ET Monitor on uh, was it WGCB, the God Channel, every Sunday night. And the guy always said, look, I have these documents that prove there are aliens. <laughs> okay? And he would say, and look at this picture. And it would be a picture of a sky with a little tiny dot in the corner. As you can see, the hatch of the spaceship there. I'm like, oh. Somebody's going to have to actually come down and anal probe me or something before I believe it. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm done. Gay or nay. I'm done. Well, I'm not asking for it. I'm just saying. I, I, uh, it has to be an extreme proof. Have you ever sat on the crapper so long your legs fell asleep? Oh, God, yes. And then I sit there punching my feet because I can't feel it. Yeah. Yep. Man, that doesn't even hurt. Yeah, this feels cool. <laughs> exactly. I could inject myself with a needle right now and not even know it. <laughs> Have you ever tried the following narcotics? Caffeine. Yes. Nicotine. Yes. Alcohol. Yes. Marijuana. No. Really? Oh. Uh, oh, I, I believe so. I've got a story with that. When I was 17... I was a straight, I was a good Catholic student. I wore a jacket and tie and proud of it. And I had an afternoon class at a, a competing school, and I was the only kid with a car. So I took all my friends, and I was also very pretentious as a 17 year old. I worked at the East Mall, and my coworkers decided to buy pipes at the pipe den. So oh. I got one too, and I was smoking my Black Cavendish pipe tobacco, mm. and I affected that for like half a year at school. Well, I'm giving these kids a ride home, and my friend Terry in the back said, Raj, let me see your pipe a second. And I said, okay, great. So I gave it to him, and he said, that's really good. He gave it to his girlfriend, Carrie, and she said, yeah, that's really good. And it came around to me, and I tasted it. It's like, oh, you put pot in my pipe. Raj, take it easy. No, how dare you? I promise never, ever, never get ever to taste pot and you put in my pipe. Which, it wasn't your fault, really? Not really. Well, but I was a devout Catholic at the time, and I was guilty for everything. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. As they, they taught us, you know, anything that you could possibly do. Right. Even if it wasn't your fault. You've killed Jesus. Right. Yeah. Every, every nail in his hand, you caused a part That's of That's right. <laughs> you have created this sin, That's and right. you've now shamed Jesus. Yep. Yeah. Have you ever tried cocaine? No. Have you ever tried acid? Uh, define acid. LSD. No. Lysithric, lysithric diathamide. I don't think yeah. that's correct, but okay. Yeah, no, that's it. That's what LSD stands Lysergic for. Lysergic acid dimethylide. Maybe that's it. <laughs> I didn't know the acid was in there. Oh, we had health class, man, and it was drilled into us just how horrible everything was. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Catholic school. Have you ever tried Tylenol? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Heroin? No. Ecstasy? No. Paint? No. You mean like huffing paint? No. Glue? 
No. Oh, we have got to get this guy to live a little bit. I know, right? <laughs> Come on. Man. I used to build models, and I get sick from the glute. I mean, I did get a buzz, but it wasn't an intentional buzz. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I know what you mean with with uh, glue markers. Um, have you ever been charged with a crime? Uh, That's right. I guess the alcohol thing. Well, you weren't really charged, right? No, no, the no. Speeding tickets. Yes. How many? Uh, two. How fast? Uh, sixty-five and a fifty-five. Oh my god! Well, it was a speed. Bad. It was a speed trap. Yeah. It was uh. a speed trap on fifteen on the way to work in the morning. Oh, uh, lovely. <laughs> East Pennsboro Township. I I guess uh, whoever whoever monitors uh, the highway from Dillsburg to. Uh, Harrisburg. Oh, oh. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, down here. Uh, could have been Lower Holland. When I lived in Boiling Springs, I was oh. on my way to work in the morning, and they had them set up just waiting for me. I got you. That sounds like Lower Holland. Yeah. yeah. And this was 82, I think. It was $120. That was big. Eight, yeah. 82 bucks. Big money. That yeah. was big money in 82. Yeah. It's like $500. Uh, the other one? What? The other speeding ticket? I don't remember exactly. Uh, where it was, I just remember there were two in my life. I, if I sat around and thought about it, I could remind. But it was very young. We have till ten o'clock. All right. Well, I'll let you know <laughs> <laughs> if you're in the middle of a bit, and I say, "Wait, I know what that speed ticket was." I remember <laughs> first car. Ah, uh, yeah, first car. First car was a '62 Chevy that my dad got for fifty bucks. Oh wow! My first real car was a '69 Toyota Corona. That I love. Oh, yeah. I the had Corona. a 71 of those. Really? A 71. Oh, yeah. my God. I was a roadie. I was a chauffeur. I, I mean, I was the shit because uh, none of my friends had cars. So I would right. move everybody around. And yeah. those were cheap and economical and gas and not hard to fix. Yeah. One of my favorite games, and I like to think I invented it, but I don't probably didn't, is wait for my friend to come up to get in the car for a ride, then take off. And then come around the block and say, I'm sorry, get in. And we try to get him to take again. off again. And do this six or seven times until he's like, the hell with you, I'll walk. Yeah. And chase him down the block and say, look, I'm really sorry. I'm really, really sorry. Just Please, kidding. just get in. And he does, take off again. <laughs> By that point, he's pissed. No, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I finally did let him in the car, but it was like, great. That, that shit is not going to happen. <laughs> right. A dream car. Um... Uh, uh, Buick LeSabre. Really? No, I know nothing about cars, so I just ask me dream guitar. I can tell I you that. Say, man, geez. <laughs> dream guitar. Um, dream guitar would be a uh, Gretsch uh, hollow body uh, Chet Atkins model 1959, which probably is about $13,000. So it's not going to happen. You could have been making that all up for all I know. Half of it was made up, but it's in the ballpark. The important part to remember here is that Gretsch actually created drums. <laughs> they did do that. No, no, Gretsch, Gretsch is a yeah, guitar. Yeah, they're, they're a drum company. Yes, but, they make, but they make guitars, too. So Gretsch is really big in drums. Right. Are they still making drums? Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, really? yeah, very much so. Yeah. yeah. Some of the worst drummers have Gretsch drums. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ones you've never heard of. You're right. <laughs> That's why you don't know about Gretsch drums. That's I, right. I, you know, I've heard of all the popular ones like Sonar, Pearl, Tama, mm-hmm, right. mm-hmm. Ludwig. Ludwig, mm-hmm. Ludwig yeah. And, uh, Slingerland, which yeah. is an old one. Yeah. Um, married. Yes. With kids. No. How many? <laughs> <laughs> one Zero. dog. I had, yeah. We had a dog that just passed away. Yes. She was my doctor, Jeff Jesse. Muir. Yeah. yeah, she was a wonderful little dog. Good dog. Yeah. Uh, pets are beautiful things. Uh, believe in ghosts. Yes. Ever witness one? Yes. Oh, please tell us. In our house, um, one day I was getting ready for work. And my wife came down and went to the laundry room, which is just right off the kitchen. And I'm talking to her about whatever, things we have to do that day or stuff. You know, and I'm just babbling on. And suddenly my wife comes around from the living room. I'm like, what are you doing there? You're in the laundry room. And I look in the laundry room and nobody's there. And then a friend of ours, uh, uh, Lisa, was over with her husband. And uh, she asked us, who's the guy in the bib overalls and the plaid shirt? And we're like, who are you talking about? She's like, come on, the guy that just came in from the living room. And we said, there wasn't anybody there. She said, don't tell me that. So <laughs> hmm. we've got at least two ghostly encounters in that house. I, yeah. I have heard ghosts operate like that. It's a 111-year-old hundred, house. So oh, wow. there's got to be some energy there, something going Absolutely. on. But they're fine with us, and I have no problem with them. I have no problem sleeping in there. If I hear a noise, I'm like, please don't leave a mess. 
That's been good. <laughs> Having ghost sex in the next room. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> that sticky stuff is in protoplasm, I don't think. <laughs> well. <clears throat> you hear this. <laughs> you walk up to it and... <laughs> You turn around and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you go ahead and ghost fucking there all you want. I'm going this way. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. Beverage yeah. of choice. Scotch. Approve and support vaccinations. Yes. Approve and support vacations. Yes. Been vaccinated from anything. Well, all the standard uh, childhood from, stuff. From our from Polio our and diphtheria right. and you, measles. Measles and mumps. Do you, do you have a choice whether you want to vaccinate your children these days, Jeff? Yes, you do. You do? Yeah. You know, people frown on it if you're a vaxxer, though. Those are the people that say that giving vaccinations to children is the equivalent of causing them to have autism. So, I think, honestly, as many I kids have that have that, been... But... As many kids as have, have taken them have been okay... I think you should sort of go, well, I can't necessarily say it was a vaccine. You know what I mean? But the, what they do is this child all, uh, gets autism, you know, from out of nowhere. And it's like, oh, well, last week they had a vaccination for this. It's so, false causality. I right. Mean, yeah, exactly. You know, you're really reaching for uh, I me. Mean, I understand you, you're puzzled. You're hurt. You know, you want to do the best for your child. Right. You're, you're grasping at straws. Exactly. But that's quite a straw to grasp from considering the benefits yeah. you know in, in the, at large the benefits uh, outweigh the possibility right exactly and that's the thing you, you you hit the nail on the head it's them reaching they're overreaching we wiped to out try and, polio trying to find something that this, that they can blame this you know well we don't do anything out of the ordinary you know my kid only sits over there in the fucking corner eating paint and you know from the 1930s <laughs> and uh, and you know and then goes outside and gets hit by a nail and you know all these these little things they come along and and the one thing they have to always blame seems to be the vaccines. Mm -hmm. It's oh my kid got the vaccine no not because you weren't paying attention to the child for twenty minutes or an hour or whatever and let them get into something you know so yeah that's that's really what it comes down to I am I am not of the theory that vaxxers are are legitimate I think. Children need to be vaccinated, otherwise we get outbreaks. I do too. Of I things that have been dead for a long time, right. like measles. Right. Nobody Polio. got measles, and then all of a sudden there was an outbreak of in this community of people who mm -hmm. were vaxxers. Sweaty armpits. Yeah. I would prefer not to see smallpox come back. Right, or large pox. I mean, <laughs> anything. <laughs> I had heard that there are some studies out there that suggest that one of the leading causes of autism is is uh, older man's sperm. That's yeah. Whoa. There there is one for that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've heard that too. Yeah. If it's a man over his prime, in other words, he's fifty and above, Thank and you. gets a woman pregnant, then yeah, then it, then it's problematic. I've heard that too. If but it's a man it, fifty and above getting a woman pregnant, that's the yeah. order of the miracle. <laughs> I, he's asking to. He's fifty. She's twenty eight. Mm -hmm. You know what okay, I mean? Right. Well, I guess it's you can't Donald help Trump it. and Melania. That's basically what it comes <laughs> down to. You know what I mean? Like, so Baron might just be, you know, at some point in time, he could contract something, and you know, his brain might Baron's turn off. Baron's a test tube kid. He's got to be. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know, man. I don't uh, know. I don't think he was able to touch her. She's like, after, get away from my after pussy. She, after she got the ring. <laughs> yeah. I think it was all, come here, come here, come here. Oh, get away, get away, get away. Come here, right. come here, come here. Oh, get away, go get away. Right, right, yeah. So they end up doing a turkey baser. <laughs> well, I'm going to go over here. I don't know. Prenups tend to get the, get the chick back in bed. Oh well, enough about that. Yeah, All really, right. we're getting. Yeah, are yeah. we still are we done forty two? We or not? digress. Nope, nope. Well, we're we're still in question nineteen. Oh my, <laughs> Trump or Bush? <laughs> <laughs> um, Bush, I voted for Bush. Really? Both against times? Kerry? Against oh, Kerry? Oh yeah, yeah. Against Kerry? There was just no contest. Right. Yeah, that one. Yeah. No, I voted for Obama because. Yeah. I mean, <sighs> you can see definitely the difference between first Except first concert. First concert, Aerosmith, uh, REO Speedwagon, opening for them at the Farm Show Harrisburg for $6.50 on December 4th, 1976. And did oh, wow. You bit, wow, holy shit. Yeah. Did, did somebody give you these questions before? No, but I'll never forget <laughs> it. It was amazing. I saw REO, but they were a good, they were a good, they were a pretty good show. REO were better than Aerosmith. That was uh, during their heroin time or something. Yeah. They were just a mess. <laughs> Mid seventies, <laughs> late seventies, yeah. they were. They, they were totally unintelligible. When yeah. you cook your drugs, things get a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just you know. Last concert. 
January 19th, 2000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, oh, October. It was uh, Jason Isbell at the... Uh, um, Who? Ah, exactly. Who? Yeah. He's a... Um, one of those alt country guys, you know, he writes really good songs, but you're not going to hear him in Nashville. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, and okay. Jason, uh, not Jason, Josh Ritter opened for him. And he, he's another one. That, uh, I he's have sort of heard like, of that. Right. He's like a folk rock kind of guy. <laughs> but but they're both killer songwriters, and I'm all about songwriting. So it, it was definitely a good show. Did Plus. you say Jason Ritter? Josh Ritter. Or Josh Ritter. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Not Jason Ritter, the actor. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I almost said son. Jason, yeah. But. Yeah. Okay, cool. Fear of heights? No. Fear of flying? No. Fear of bugs? No. Fear of being naked in public? No. Well, <laughs> you feel pretty strongly about that. I know who we're getting to go to the Today Show <laughs> with the Jeff and Dan dot com on the front of his chest. Oh. It should be all blurred out while they're walking while he's walking around. Not if I have to shave. <laughs> favorite, <laughs> favorite sport? Um, tennis. All right. Well, come on, look at the girls that play tennis. Yeah, that's true. Oh. Yeah, They're all Eastern European. They're all about nine feet tall. Maria Most Sharapova. Maria, who, Maria Sharapova. Who was that girl I had a real big crush on for a while? Well, I guess she didn't mean that much to me. Oh, Anna Kordakova? <laughs> no, this was going was back my one. time. <laughs> that would be my time, too. Yeah. <laughs> and his time as well. Chris right. Everett Lloyd. There we go. Oh, Chris Everett. Everett. Yeah, she does uh, sports casting now. She's, she's really good looking. Yeah. Yeah, not anymore. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hmm. That's good because I thought she was ugly as hell back then. <laughs> no, I, I really thought she was quite a cutie back in the eighties. And um, well, what did they have in the eighties? Pat Benatar and Chrissy Everett. I was going to say, you know, we had three channels, so you either had to watch tennis, yeah, or you had to watch uh, the news, or you had to watch Pete McTeen cartoons. Pete McTeen cartoons? You, Pete McTee. You know, yeah, you it was in Fox 43. Pete? Oh, I know. You don't remember? Pete well, in the McTee? 80s, I was out rocking and rolling. I was an adult by then. I didn't watch many cartoons. So you're saying clowns can't rock and roll? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Clowns yeah. are horrible people. They're ugly. <laughs> you know what? They are creepy motherfuckers. They really are. Oh, I've got a clown story for you. Though. Let's oh. hear a clown story. Okay, you guys were talking about America's Got Talent the other week. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the, the little girl with the talent. and the. Did, yeah. did you happen to again. watch it? I watched uh, Puddle's Pity Party. Are you aware of Puddle's yes. Pity Party? Yes. Pity Party. Did you see him on American Yes. Pity Party? He is incredible. He and could he, sing, but he's still a creep. Exactly. I was just going to say, he's monstrous, but man, what a great voice. Yeah. He's like um, 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 Captain Spaulding oh, <laughs> and shit. Twisty's nice brother. Oh. And he's still monstrous. He's like six foot eight. Scary as hell, but boy, can he sing. He, he was, oh my God, he had classic voice. Insane clown killers. Yeah. <laughs> and there, there was a girl on last night. That she was like eight years old. Oh, dude, the old. fucking feels, man. Not that one. The, the deaf girl. Oh, well, the deaf. I yeah. That one got me in the fucking heart, man. Like I like a like a lightning bolt. Because my wife was watching it, and yeah, I decided but, to go upstairs, and she's like, "Oh, I'm just gonna watch this." And I'm like, "Fuck, I don't want to watch well, this." Did you? She goes, "You gotta see this shit." She she was talking about the little eight year old girl. I did see her. We we were around it and watched that. Don't you think that was amazing? I thought it was pretty good. I mean, yeah, she had a voice of a tw of a classically trained twenty year old. Yeah, yeah. She was. She came out and she was all talking like this and oh my god and all this. And all of a sudden, she gave her a mic saying, la 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 feelings. And we was like, holy shit, she, man. She fucking kid i was like whoa she's belting this shit out that was crazy she's i did i did agree she's gonna be on intervention eventually but i thought the deaf girl was much better she's peaking now what eight years old yeah when she's 20 and she's only a so-so singer compared to other adults right right she's gonna go right for the meth exactly <laughs> <laughs> you see that bitch over there eating lemon heads and that's all she's fucking eating she's like <laughs> That's what happened was, to me. I was on America's Got Talent. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I almost had a record contract. And, uh, you know, yeah. Shut up, Mom. I'm only 28. I mean, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, the, the deaf girl really did it for me. She made me She made me get teary-eyed and shit because... Dude, you gotta. Here's what you gotta understand, and you, should, you out of anybody, should understand. This I, best. I do understand it, but if she wasn't deaf, she would just be another singer. Right, but that was the thing. She's deaf, and she as her part of her story, she was singing up until the point where she got deaf when it was like 18 or whatever, and then she couldn't sing or play anymore. She had no idea 
what was being done. She could sing, but it wouldn't come out. And she can't hear it. She can't tune herself. She can't do anything to, you know, make the music. That's what's so incredible about that is she can't hear don't, this stuff. So don't you think eventually? You know how death. I'm not making fun of them, no, I, no, I, no. but I'm just stating a fact. You know how we talk like this here, right? But if I went deaf or anyone else went deaf, we, we end up talking like 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 that. Only the people that are born like that. That's true. That's only people that are born well, like we that. We would end up talking like this. You got to remember, she had a voice. Look at Rush Limbaugh. She had hearing all the way up <laughs> until she was to? 18, and she's like 20, <laughs> 21 or something now. You know what I mean? She was 18 years old when she lost her hearing, and then at 21. I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that that, and, and well, her voice when when she was talking was totally normal. Right. Wow. Did not know she was deaf. Right. That will change. Mm. It will eventually. And you're so right. will her singing voice. I, I, I don't I, know, man. I hope I'm wrong. What, what the thing is, the, go, what caused her to go deaf? Yeah. What caused her to go deaf? Uh, a she disease. Had a, she had a disease. Yeah. Oh. It hit her and impaired her, and then. She thought it was just ear infections, but apparently she had a genetic disease that causes her hearing. Oh, well, fuck her then. Right. Well, yeah. no. No, but that's where well, the parents were blaming me. <laughs> <laughs> there once was a man from Nantucket <laughs> uh, whose dick was so long he could suck it. <laughs> he said with a grin. As, As he, he wiped off his chin, chin if my, my ear were a cunt, cunt I would I'd fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest of limericks. Anyway, <laughs> I am the man from Nantucket. Oh, geez, you already got that ear, didn't you? Um, no, uh, no. But seriously, if you think about what she had to do, she had to do double time in order to sing that song. What I mean by double time is she not only had to get it correctly, but she had to do it in such a way that it had to be all memorized. No hearing. When you sing, I know this for a fact. When you sing, you go up and play karaoke or whatever. You can tell that people, they can hear themselves and then they know, I've got to change this. I've mm. got to change this. It has to be powerful. Oh, yes. And that's where they make their changes. When you're deaf, you can't do that. That's what made that so incredible is that she had learned and processed and recorded basically herself singing without being able to hear it and then project that singing back. Right. Dude, she wasn't, I mean, she was quite literally not able to, to determine if she was even singing right. That's what's so incredible about that. Not only that, the only way she could get the tempo to start the song was that she had to feel it start in the floor. Mm. That's why they had this giant amplifier next to her. Oh. There was an Ampeg amp next to her, and it, and it hit the floor when the guy played the piano and the guitar. So she knew what her tempo was at that point. And then she just played the ukulele the whole time. And I'm like, that's, that's oh my God, just the way she was able to sing it. Just, oh God, it kills me, man. It kills me. I mean, and I just, you know, I don't, I don't, not giving her the sentimental vote. I'm just giving her, because, I mean, look, you know, Simon Cowell never gives out the golden award. He right. never right. presses the button and sends somebody straight on. He never does it. Last night, it was in two seconds right after she was done singing, he whapped that button. I saw that. And she was gone. But I, I was like. I do have some questions about that. Okay. Um, well, number one. You don't have to pee, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I do now. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> um, I think maybe I've been mistreating Simon a little bit and just thinking he's a dick. No, he's a dick. Yeah, he is. Maybe so, but I see now how he thinks, and I think that's how he, you should think if you're in a position like him. Exactly. He's thinking what sells records, right. what sells exactly. tickets. Exactly. He, he's not thinking with his heart. Oh, like, no. like, like you didn't watch the show last night, did you? No, I never watched the show. It's terrible. Yeah, that's, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I, just, I just watch clips. Totally fucking agree. It, it is, but lately they've been having some good acts. Have like you noticed girl. all the judges are not Americans? <laughs> Even Howie Mandel is yeah, Canadian. Canadian, yeah. Right. No, I have not. That's true. Yeah. That's really fucked up. America's yeah. got talent. Right. Ain't got no goddamn judges, but... We got <laughs> well, here's the thing. You were talking about Simon Cowell, and here's the thing. Initially, he went on American Idol as a producer for, like, record label and stuff, and he told people the way it was, and that made him the dick. Yes. He's actually been on record as saying he didn't like to have to do that. Mm. So instead of continuing to do it, he created Britain's Got Talent. Right. When he created that and then brought it to the States, did he give, they were like, oh, yeah, cool, we got to have Simon Cowell on there. Did, did he give back any of that money he made for being a dick? Oh, no. 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 Well, no. I don't think he really hated it then. Oh, well, no. too bad well, about it. Right, right. But that's the thing. He had to do something to make it sell. And that's basically right. what he did. He well, made it sell. it's like anybody who has a great or a terrible job mm -hmm. but makes a ton of money, you just power through it. 
Right. Although I don't think it was that bad. Yeah. It was always been a bit unpleasant, but yeah. I mean, on. yeah. He but just he, tell it like it is, and that's he, he was a jerk. The black guy was a semi jerk. Yeah, right. Uh, Randy Jackson. The girl was obnoxious. <laughs> Oh, come on. Paula Abdul? Oh, yeah. Paula, she was all on pills no, and stuff. You no, could no, way no. She was always time. like, Ugh. The other yeah. girl, maybe. You're the oh, best. Was, was uh, Paula you, Abdul? The later one was uh, Jennifer Lopez, who can't, don't mm. say anything about, about her. I love Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, <sighs> yeah I oh, never right. watched any of those shows. So. Oh, we I watched, just know from video clips that I've seen. A, you know? As soon as they stopped doing this shit where the first few weeks were just humiliating people. Right. Then we started to watch it because they really did have a lot of talented people. On. Yeah, I mean it did, but at the same time, like I explained to Dan last week, I don't like it because I don't want to be told who I'm supposed to be listening exactly. to. Exactly. You right. know that's that's ridiculous. Oh, I agree. Let those I people work. Let those people work. Dave Grohl put it best, and I, I think I've said this on the oh, show yeah, before. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, well, where yeah. he says, you know, get a get a guitar, mm-hmm. a shitty guitar from mm-hmm. the pawn shop, go in the garage, play badly, suck at it. And then continue hammering it out. And if it's really for you and you really want to go somewhere with it and do something with it, you will. And that's the way to become stardom. Uh, you know, um, Absolutely. Have stardom. So, you know. But American I, Idol was a good... Uh, concept. Well, it was a good way to waste an hour no. sitting with the wife, <laughs> you know, during watching TV. Sorry, hon, I'm not saying I wasted an hour watching with you. Yeah. It was a, <laughs> I had a lot of fun. Right. But as soon as the season was over, I forgot who any of those people were. Right. Except for Kelly Clarkson and whoever the other one who has Carrie it. Underwood. Carrie Underwood. Harry Underwear. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I was just going to say something really profound, but I forgot what it was. Sorry. <sighs> it was going to be life changing. Yeah. Oh, well, tune in <laughs> next week. Maybe I'll remember. All right. Question? Last uh, question. All right. Last question. Do you have any questions for us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, A four. Yeah. Uh, how does it feel to be the superior talent of the two? Oh, my God. And Jeff, how do you feel being in his shadow? Being the inferior talent is what he's calling me. I'm the inferior talent. I'm not well, saying that. <laughs> it's kind of like the big brother thing. Yeah. I protect my little brother. That's right. If he wants to think he's the shit, let him think he's the shit. <laughs> Tuck that's, me under your wing. That's a good brother. <laughs> he's got the right idea. <laughs> well, hey, that concludes our uh, game show 42 questions for this week. Tune in next week when we won't ask anybody a damn thing. <laughs> All right, man. We need some exit music. Roger, you want to go ahead and do some exit music? Labia. (laughs) It's nothing more than labia. Here we go. Did you ever wonder if your mom gave dad a blowjob right before she kissed you goodnight? Did she swallow and eat a lot of folks you'll never meet? And does the thought of it give you a fright? (laughs) Come on. Now, do you ever wonder? I try not to think about that. Uh, yeah, I know I exactly. Did, I did walk in on my parents one time. Imagine, hey, there's a guy sitting over here on the floor. You too? With a <laughs> guy laying over you, here on the floor with a stab wound. You walked in, in on my parents? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really embarrassing. Yeah, that's wrong horrible. house and everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. I think I got the wrong house. Yeah. There's a guy over here dead on the floor, stab wound, knife in his hand. And that's when you say... That's it. No more Mr. Knife Guy. (laughs) One of the best two songs ever. Okay, enough of that shit. We are huge David Caruso fans. Here. I know. Oh, I, we are. Me too. And, and actually, I'm just in love with the first part of the show. Oh, that's it. As soon as he takes his glasses off and says his tagline, right. that's, that's the best. That's it. Followed by, yeah. I'm ready, yeah. I'm ready to go to bed after that. <laughs> Can you imagine that guy with a monotone voice made all kinds of money doing that show? Exactly. I mean, he's not ugly, but he's not overly good looking either. No, right. And, he and he's awkward. Yes. Very awkward. He said, this is the way they did it in the actor's studio. And he mugs, you know, makes his yeah. main expressions, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it was kind of shitty. But, you know, it's always good to make fun of that because it's it's a really fun thing, you know. Right. So. Well, he's riffing. He's not really acting. He's, he's doing the same shtick. Right, know, exactly. Week yeah. after week because it pays. Over and over. And, and, you know, you think of that and him being the guy of that thing. But if you actually sat down and watched all the CSI in Miami's, you'd begin to realize that he's a dick. He's a huge dick. 
there's been a, quite a few episodes where they went to, you know, they went off the air. And like the one I just watched last night, um, the husband had not been acquitted for, or had not been accused for murder. He was getting ready to be released, mm-hmm. but he had been beating his wife, you know, and it'd been like a bad situation. And Horatio's like, we're not done yet. And he closes the blinds, and all of a sudden you hear all the ruffling shit going on, and then the credits Oh, roll. right. And right. I'm like, he just fucked that dude all up. And yeah. I'm like, nobody ever comes back on him for this shit. And right. he does it a lot, man, a lot, a lot. Like, he's hidden, like, evidence, and he's done all kinds of shit. And it's like, wow, that's just, you know. But usually it's always for the good, you know what I mean? The one interesting thing about him, and it's always very surprising. That doesn't make it right. Exactly. Well, the one thing he always does, and it's very surprising because he's such an awkward person, but he seems to be able to do it quite well, is that um, he'll sit down and talk to children. Mm -hmm. And he'll get down to their level and be speaking with them very nicely, very fluidly. It's always monotone, but monotonous too. Uh, But yeah, he's talking to them and the kids respond. They like, they, they get it. You know what I mean? Like they understand what he, how he's trying to get to their level. And you know, I I know it's scripted that way. You know, Jimmy, when the cops come to your house, all they want to do is help. When they touch you, it's just to get information so they can catch the bad people. (laughs) (laughs) You knew that shit was coming. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Very prolific. You yes. know what? Does it, do you belong? Are you on Twitter? I am. Are you on Twitter regularly? You, you, Always. Uh, yes. Are you on Twitter regularly too? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. We yeah. pretty much talk to each other. We're, yeah. we're, we only follow each other. Nobody else <laughs> listens. Twitter. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Look up David Caruso and kind of tweet to him, jeffanddan.com. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> These guys were talking shit about you, Horatio. <laughs> they love you, but they hate you at the same time. <laughs> Like everybody, <laughs> they totally want to kick your ass or something. I don't know. I am so sorry. I do not remember you from NYPD Blue at all. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 the only thing I could think of was Metavoy. Yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember? Oh my um, God, NYPD Blue. Yes. Yeah. The the Dick uh, quit after one season, thinking he was going to be the right. big star. Exactly. And he made like one movie that tanked, and so right. he, he was chasing the next TV gig I get. I'm going to milk it for all it's worth. <laughs> I'll do the same shtick. I'll take the sunglasses off every week if they want me to. I'm not going to try and method it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he does, man. He plays that same fucking role everywhere he goes. Yeah. Even in NYPD Blue, he yeah. was very similar. To I Rachel don't remember him. I the only thing I can think of is McAvoy he was the other redheaded guy that right. was in the yeah, show yeah. Yeah. Meta- Metavoy was a little Metavoy, older right. older yeah. right. goofy mm-hmm. yeah he was the uh, comic relief for right. a while yeah. Yeah. till the really hot receptionist took a shine to him and then so like well I guess he's got some game but not yeah. really that Medivac dude what is his name <laughs> <laughs> medivac medivac yeah well how about yeah. sipowitz the guy is sipowitz. ugly sipowitz yeah. yeah yeah he walked away yeah. star of the show that's right yes ass out every fucking show yes. I was and like, oh my god. god and he never did a thing since don't want to see no. dennis franz's ass anymore man Pfft, no that's the reason why because they were like okay we're just going to go ahead and permanently imprint nypd blue on your butt cheek <laughs> and they're like well he's like oh i'm never going to be able to get another job again fuck this sucks <laughs> hey he made bank with that ass oh, can yes, you imagine did. that yeah. can you believe that can you imagine that being a logical <laughs> statement right and it was bank with that ass it was the first it was the one that it was the show that forced the fcc to take a look at their rules and then come up with the exact times and exact placements of shows that could do things that were beyond what was acceptable oh well thank god we have the fcc i know yeah. right and then that that's why they made it 10 o'clock at night from 10 to 11 because usually 11 is the news on most channels uh, most major channels, anyway, right. said that you know from that time to that time they could do things that were a little bit above and beyond. So NYPD Blue started getting asses and titties out, and I'm like, holy shit! You know, did they really ever show breasts? Oh, I ever they didn't saw show there was nipples. Asses. They didn't show nipples. Yeah. They would show a side. What boob. is it with the nipple that uh, is such a problem? I don't know. That's what I said. I I said that on our freaking uh, site or no on the uh, Twitter page. It's the cherry on the Sunday. Right. I mean, nobody wants to eat the cherry. I mean, <laughs> my wife always asks for the cherry. I mean, whenever we have a, a, a ice cream or a shake or something, can I have your cherry? Of course, you may have my cherry. There you she go. She gets two cherries. I get no cherry. <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> it's okay. I get. I give my wife pickles. She loves pickles. <laughs> I'm sure she does. I gave my wife the pickle. <laughs> and it tickled. <laughs> Sorry, man. Speaking of my wife, man, I've got, I got to mention, my wife complained to me that she feels scatterbrained lately. 
And I told her some of the smartest and most brilliant people were that way, like uh, JFK and Lincoln. <laughs> 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 she wasn't very happy about that. So. Yeah, only because she didn't know who they were. That's right. She didn't. She didn't want me to shoot her in right. the right in the head or something. You, know? you mean I'm going to be on a coin someday? <laughs> <laughs> it's a Christie coin. It's a useless one dollar coin. Go ahead, use it. <laughs> Seriously, they fucked over at Susan B. Anthony and Second Julia. Both of them got screwed. Right. Nobody uses the dollar coin. Nobody wants to use the dollar coin. In England and most other countries, they have a dollar coin. They use it every day, but here we don't. And well, they make it, less and less well, of them every year. Do you many know how many half a Christie's you need to do a load of laundry? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them. What would you rather carry around? $21 bills or $20 coins? It's true. That's what it comes down to is carrying this shit around. It's yeah. easier to carry around paper. It than, sure is. But I guess we don't have to worry about any of that here soon. I know, right? Because we're not going to have an economy. We're all going to be blown up by North Korea. Anyway, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah. <laughs> but I was thinking that uh, before that happens, we're just going to get rid of cash altogether. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that scares me. And anybody with half a brain, that should scare too, a little bit. Do you or at collect, least cause them to think. Do you collect gold? No. Oh, me either. Uh, do you think when the shit actually does hit the fan that we're going to be go go total road warrior or um, uh, smaller community, communities will band together uh, and try to maintain some sort of civilization a la The Walking Dead or whatever? I think that's what it's going to come down to. And it's being all pushed to the states right now. The states are really the ones that have to make up their minds as to whether or not they're going to do something to offset the problems that are being caused and sort of you know annexed in the federal government level things like um you know uh, okay yeah great we're going to put coal and coal you know factories back to work and blah 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 when in actuality we found out that that is actually going to cost more money than it will and the jobs aren't permanent and right. the coal miners are dying left yes. and right so the thing that the, the the thing about that is and you know I'm not against it okay great send it back to the states that's a really wonderful idea but most states aren't going to be that way. A lot of states are going to be because they're, you know, they have this leader, this, you know, governor in, you know, the mix who is either, you know, staunchly Republican or staunchly Democrat. Really, honestly, no state is going to just be like, oh, yeah, you know, we got this guy that's sort of centrist. You know, he's sort of down the middle. Mm -hmm. They won't do it. And so that you have to worry about those states that have the far leaning right or far leaning left that are going to make rules and policies for the state. Like, Tom Wolf is a really great example, far leaning left. As a businessman, you would think he would be more Republican. You would think that he would be like less government, less government. Let's make some more money. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's you know give get rid of these regulations. Let's you know get these companies open. But he did exactly opposite that. He's like, I there's no other better way to put it. He is the antithesis of the president. Ow. That word hurt my head. Yeah, man. I, that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's okay. I don't. Yeah. I don't have a clue what we're talking about. How we even got here? <laughs> you're like, just give me the bowl, man. It's good. <laughs> well, well, based on where you guys live, do you think your community communities will rally and be able to uh, create a, a safe environment, a safe haven, for, like a safe zone? Well, yeah. I, I do, but hope, only because hope, we're in the middle of nowhere. My train of thought got derailed. Okay. Are we talking about like something god awful happened in the future? Well, even and... if the grid goes down for a month, right. there's going to be problems. Right. He's talking um, about like infrastructure, electrical, the whole thing, telephone, the, the, everything. Worst case scenario. Out. That's all you had to say. Worst case scenario. Worst well, case scenario. I think my community of Camp Hill will be able to pull it together. It's a beautiful community. I think everybody will have a polo shirt. I think children <laughs> will still be able to wear khakis. I think. Anybody who's doing without will be able to eat top dop ciders. And, 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 you know, oh, those people are going to taste good. I can just tell. Like, absolutely. Yeah. There's no current. There's no corruption to their meat. There will always be a bake sale. <laughs> Linda had a bake sale. She baked her son. <laughs> Have some. <laughs> Lovely. No, I'm I, allergic to nuts. I see. I work. <laughs> you can pick the nuts off. Can we get the little girl? Can, can we have a? Can we have the little girl cook next time? I don't like nuts. Totally anyway. organic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I worry about that because the thinking behind that is, you know, uh, it's valid. 
it is valid. Um, and there's a lot of people in this world who are set for that kind of thing. They call themselves doomsday, doomsday preppers. I have friends who are doomsday preppers. I, I, as well. I yes. have family members that are very yes. similar to that. So um, <clears throat> my problem with something like Camp Hill, and this isn't to you know debase what you just said. Oh, but, please, you may. Okay. Is that the people up there are a little bit more asshole-ish. Oh, no, absolutely. Right. Oh, so, my God. You can't throw a stone without hitting an asshole. Exactly. So you you kind of... And, 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 <laughs> I've got plenty of stone <laughs> bruises to show it. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. It's like, you know, this conglomerate of people who are kind of asshole-ish don't want to give, you know, uh, they're not going to give you a chance, basically, mm. is what I'm trying mm. to say. Mm. That's what makes me worry about that. Right. Here, though, um, I think we would be able to pull together as a community, but we would have a problem with uh, right-leaning thinkers and left-leaning thinkers. Right. And like I told Dan earlier, and like I said you know, out loud, um, basically I think it's a lot of left and right when it needs to be more right and wrong. We Absolutely. need to be thinking yes. right we and wrong. We need more centrists. Exactly. We yes. need, well, it doesn't even have well, to no, be no, that. Well, no, it has to be down the middle, but right. get off the fringe. Right. Or just, just be open to what people might say about right. something. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I am trying to, trying to, attempting to take what our president does at face value and try to figure things out. But then I go and get all kafifi. Yeah, you do. And I don't know what to think when I get all kafifi. <laughs> so I kind of worry about that. You know what I mean? I, I, it's a legitimate thing. You know what I mean? It's legitimate. It's a real, and I could just picture him sitting at home going, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and release this word kafifi. Anybody want to bet that this is going to become national news? <laughs> and people are like, gives friends around, like, go ahead, go ahead, Dow. Go ahead, do it, do it. We want to see what happens, man. <laughs> Kofifi. That's fucking awesome. I love it. It's not even a real word. but What's it supposed to mean? I don't know. No, Nobody no, knows. It's a, type, it's a typo. And we he's think trying it to, is. Right. And yeah. he's trying to, come on. The man is, I mean, what you see is what you get. I mean, he puts it right out there. There's no deeper meaning. Right. He's not going to. Hey, I'm going to create a cryptic code that right. nobody can decipher except my inner circle. Exactly. Let's put it out there just to show them who's in charge. Cryptic code. It's going to be beautiful. <laughs> bigly. Bigly. <laughs> bigly. It's going to be the bigliest the word. Bigliest, beautifulest code. <laughs> believe me. Believe me. The Oxford English Dictionary is going to make that word of the year next year, whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> we, should, we should right now define what kofifi means. I think it's just misspelled coffee. Is it? That's what it looks like to me. What does anybody remember? What the end of the sentence was, or what these what the statement was that it ended the sentence? Of? Yes, nope. it's uh, despite the uh, media's kafifi. I think was what it was. Yeah, coffee, despite the media's coffee, their light roast. I think yes, co- despite the constant negative press, kafifi. Right. Kafifi is their word for Baron's duty when he was a child. No, Look, no, no. he made another kofifi. So cute. <laughs> Wipe his ass with a hundred. <laughs> oh, get Basically. him away from me, nanny, nanny. Get him away from me. He's disgusting. We gotta have you but come I down lo- and do I Melania. Love him. <laughs> we gotta have you come down and do Melania. I'll be over here doing Trump. Believe me, believe me, believe me. You're doing Trump, dude. If you watch, if you read the transcripts from when he went out and told, I think I don't know if I told you this last week. When he went out and uh, was explaining that we were leaving the Paris uh, Accord, um, dude, I think like nine times he said, believe me. Oh. It's like one of his favorite, th- and, and the wild thing, oh, we did talk about this, because the wild thing is, is he'll be talking about something, and then he'll realize the importance of what he's saying, and that's when he says, oh, and believe me. Well, that's, it's like people saying like. You know, right. like, yeah. uh, uh, it's just a habit, I'm trying to... Uh, put my thoughts together here so right, right, believe right. me yeah I think it's more a situation where he just wants people to understand that this is an underlined thing whatever's written here has been underlined and it, as important and I need you to understand that it's important and I can't tell you that it's underlined without I know, right I know you guys watch religious shows on Sunday morning have you ever heard uh, Dr. Charles Stanley yes okay his thing is now it says in Ezekiel now listen Ezekiel says, the lion shall, now listen, 
The lion shall lay with the lamb. Now listen. Right. And, and it's just every uh, two minutes or every two words, it's, oh, now listen, now listen. Right. I'm like, I'm not listening anymore. You keep, you keep saying it like I'm not paying attention. Right, Like exactly. I'm not capable of paying attention. Right. <laughs> you know, so screw you. Right, exactly. Jesus and Christ did the same thing. He did not. Yes, he did. Verily I say unto you. But verily I say unto he you. He didn't say it every two <laughs> verily, words. Verily I Not say, every two words. Verily I say unto he you. He said, verily I say unto you, let's have some loaves and fishes. Come on. Let's get our picnic on, then we'll talk some shit. Let's do that. I don't think he said shit. He might have. <laughs> Whatever the Arme- uh, the uh, Sumerian word for shit was back then. Yeah. Kafefi. Kafefi. <laughs> <laughs> now we know what the code was. Christ pooped. <laughs> The shortest oh, verse in the Bible. <laughs> you guys are going to hell. <laughs> I but, will think about you. I'm, you dri- I'm driving the bus. <laughs> Let's hell, go, man. I'm in but. purgatory now. <laughs> it's only a short drive. <laughs> yeah, so that was interesting. But uh, yeah, Rogers, right? We need to really consider if that were to happen, because it's very possible that that could, that that could happen. One yeah. one thing though that if it would happen, I one thing that that kind of gives me calm is knowledge is like a genie. Once it's out of the bottle, you are not putting it back in. Yeah, that's it's true. Like nuclear war weapons, once that got out of the bottle, basically what I mean was once China got the knowledge, once Russia got the knowledge, right. you were not putting it back in the bottle. Oh, absolutely. The electricity, you were not going to put that back no, in the bottle. No, no, if no. something should happen... There will be a couple guys that will stumble, just making a hypothetical, that will stumble across a um, encyclopedia, right? Relearn that, oh, and then put up their own, put right. up their own uh, light power plants. Figure oh, out sure. how to do the stuff, yes. right? Yes, it eventually will come back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's always going to wrap around. We'll always do that until we determine that there's something more powerful, which I'm pretty sure we will at some point. Like the, you know, the. Uh, star-based killer kind of thing. You know, look, we created the Death Star, and we don't need no fucking nuclear weapons anymore. We can blow up a whole planet. We don't need no stinking nuclear weapons. <laughs> the other side of that is that the majority of America, and I include myself, mm-hmm. you could give them the cure for cancer, and it would be the most simplest salad in the world. And eat this three times, and you will never get cancer. Right. And they'll be like, what? Yeah. What? I'm not going to keep eating that. Sal- uh, a lettuce? Uh, do I, do I put carrots in it? <laughs> They're just not going to get it. They're That's just true. not going to get it. I mean, not, knowledge may be out there, but it's not necessarily going to be processed. Exactly. Somebody will, You're right. though. Somebody, somebody will. Somebody will because and they're gonna somebody make a wants, off of it. let's just take electricity. Somebody's going to want to read at night. Somebody's going to need electricity to make Food, mass produce food right, because right, it's their business. Right, right. right. So somebody's going to be needing electricity. Yes, we're always going to have stupid people, and yes, we're <laughs> going to. Uh, I think. I think in the worst case scenario, the stupid people are going to be weeded out by Mother Nature. I don't yeah, know about that. No, man. no, that's not true because you always need stupid people to do the base labor. I mean, people. Yeah, people who really. They, they they want to live. Right. They're, they're looking for a living or, 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 or just to survive. And they will do the base labor. Right. It's the caste the, 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 system. Right, right. The caste You've got to have the peasants right. be able to do the menial work. Otherwise, your, you don't get that done. You have your Edisons who will invent electricity and electrical processes or whatever. And they'll be the ones to make the money. Right. But it doesn't mean it's going to weed out the stupid people. Right. Now, some will. And I think that's the way the world's going right now is things are not being done for the American people, being the people at large, right. it's uh, heading towards a thinning of the herd. And that's worldwide. That's not just here. Right. I mean, what's going on in Sudan? What's going on in Iraq? I mean, it's all thinning of the herd. What's going right. on in Syria? Right. And, and it's I still not killing our populations, it, it, though. It's, it's considered it's... evil because we have a consciousness, we have an ethnic code and everything. But but by nature, nature it's... being e- equal all around, right. and it's just the herd thinning itself. Yeah. It's just the, the hawk eating the other birds. Right, that's basically exactly. what it comes down to. I, I, I agree. I agree. I, I think even though that's the case, we also have to identify what we consider stupid people. Because I've had a lot of menial jobs in my life, you know, and that being the case, that would make me a stupid person. That no, but that's no, no, not no, no, really no. what it is. That's not true. No, right? No, no. Right. That's not true. Right. 
You do must needs. You work whatever you can to right. support your family. I'm just saying, you know, the majority of people that end up in those positions have no alternative. Oh, well, no alternative or no um, ability to better themselves. Well, that's what I mean. Well, the, the, yeah. the, the, be, through intelligence or, or, or opportunity, they can only go so far. Right, right. And because they can't see past the, the, the moment. Yeah. I now, mean, that's, that's, many that's, of us have found ourselves in a working class situation where, I mean, I mean, I consider myself working class now. I'm not making big bucks or anything. Right. But, but we found ourselves, you know, needing that minimum wage just to get by. Right. And uh, it, 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 we know it's a temporary thing. You just muddle through for now. You know, we, we, we look for the opportunities. Uh, while other people are happy to have that little bit of you know, right. income because they don't know what else to do. Right. They want to work at Chick-fil-A. They want to be able to, I mean, that may be the only job that they can potentially get. It might be the only thing that they're qualified for because, dude, I have numerous, numerous experience doing different things. And I can look in, in uh, Indeed or Monster or any of these places to try and get a job. And every one of them is looking for something very specific. Right. And that's the thing. If... I can't go out right now. I'm getting too old and I'm getting too worn down. My body's tearing down um, to go out and start doing working at McDonald's and getting under shake machines and cleaning that shit out. You know exactly. what I mean? Yes. It's very difficult. I cannot do that. So I, and I cannot make seven thirty-five an hour. Right. I have to make yes. like 15 bucks yes. or more an hour. I mean, that's even really, really low, but if I, you know, it's, it's a very narrow possibility of being able to get that kind of money and do that kind of job when it, you know, uh, you don't have the skills or the uh, and that's the thing it's not even the intelligence for it I've met people that were basically monkeys for the most part they were monkeys and were able to do a job and get to some place you know relatively interesting you know people that had a sixth grade uh, uh, education and got up to one of the upper echelon of management for a, a very large tool company it's like how does that even happen exactly. how does that happen I mean, it, it's it's luck in a lot of ways because back then it was you know just do hard work, just do hard work, and then you know boom you get it uh, you know exactly to do more. Well, you you mentioned that we have an older population now, right? Uh, the benefits that we have is it's it's a time when entrepreneurial uh, ventures have a chance because uh, mm. if you create the new mouse trap or right. a new process for watching a mouse trap at HG HD, right? Um, you can benefit from that. Yeah. Um, you don't necessarily have to be the one setting the mouse trap or, right. or digging the cheese out of the cracks or whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cheese out of the crack. Um, and 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 uh, there are opportunities out there. You just have. Oh, uh, Dan was saying earlier about marketing skills. Right. That's where I lack. I'm terrible at the idea of marketing. Right. But if you can create a demand and a product and market it, oh my God, the world is your oyster. Exactly. It doesn't matter what it is. That is true. Now, if we can go back to talking about pussy and boogers, that would be right. great. Pussy and boogers. Let's get off the heavy shit. <laughs> Two things I love to eat. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe I just said that. Yeah. I can. <laughs> I uh, I have some unfortunate news that I need to share with uh, with Roger here in a uh -oh. minute. Uh oh. Yes, there is a uh, a well. And let me give it a little bit a bit of backstory here. I created an idea for a TV show. Actually, it originally was going to be a movie, and I do have a script for the movie. It's oh. just not completely done yet. But I do have um, where I've uh, you know we started writing. I started writing like a couple of episodes of this show. And basically what it is, is um, it's like uh, Battlestar Galactica, the new one, uh, meets... Um, Red Dwarf. Yeah, we have Red Dwarf, which is a or old BBC show. Or Hitchhiker's. Or Hitchhiker's Guide, right. I mean, it's, it's hilarious. There's a lot of hilarity to it. It's very funny. And uh, I'm not going to give out the name or anything because I don't want that to go. But um, I've just discovered that uh, Seth MacFarlane, who is one of my favorite right. people on this planet... yes is now creating a show. Now, I would just be like, eh, you know, it's not so bad. That's cool. I could still do my show and everything would be all right. But there's a coincidental thing here, and I want to get uh, get Roger to hear this. So give me a second here. Two gay men can't just be friends, just like a straight woman and a straight man can't not be this. friends. Also, here it comes. Ed, have a seat. I have good news. There's a ship available. The USS Orville. 
Ever since I was a kid, I have wanted to serve on an exploratory vessel. You're nobody's first choice for this job. But we have 3,000 ships to staff, and we need captains. Can I have one of these mints? Those are marbles. <laughs> We're giving you one last chance. <laughs> this is Seth MacFarlane? This is Seth MacFarlane. He's yeah, I am thrilled Bastard. to be your new captain. I want this to be an efficient ship, but also one that you're glad to be serving on. Lieutenant Commander Bordas, your entire species is male, isn't it? That is correct, sir. Probably not a lot of arguments about leaving the toilet seat up and that kind of thing. <laughs> Buckland's urinate only once per year. Really? That's, I mean, I'm, I'm up two, three times a night. That's that is sad. unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. It is. It is. <laughs> Time to meet the locals. Hi, I'm Captain Ed Mercer. Holy crap! <laughs> we don't mean your family any harm. Well, we did just shoot his dad. Aside from shooting your dad, we don't mean your family any harm. <laughs> Captain, there's a message coming in from Admiral Halsey. It says that an executive officer has become available. No. No, 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 no. Oh, Sorry, man. You okay? Yeah, it's all good, man. You okay? Yeah, all he good. just ran through a burger. Ah, no Is that Norm McDonald? The captain does not appear to be pleased at the arrival of his first officer. They were married. No way. You know how many times I tried to talk to you? But you weren't hearing me. Or you were around at all, but I did try. I, said, I was no. the one who suggested couples. <laughs> so the therapist was your brother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> this should be a really fun trip for all of us. Perhaps we should not be talking about this. Oh, no, no, no. We're, t we're talking about this. <laughs> this is a thing. <laughs> this is a thing. You'll be delivering supplies to the science station on Epsilon 2. Thank you for coming. We need protection. Protection from what? The krill. We have figured out a way to manipulate the speed of events. So, it's an anti-banana ray. Very interesting. <laughs> we need no longer fear the banana. <laughs> what about salads? <laughs> what about salads? Do you realize this could be used as a weapon? That's why you're here. Orders to Captain Mercer. Just detected a krill destroyer entering oh. orbit. Doors jammed. Alara. You want to open this jar of pickles for me? I loosened it for you. <laughs> Return fire! Give me the device, or I will destroy your ship. Sorry, can you can you move like two steps to your right? It's just a lot of dead space there. Just perfect. Yeah, sorry, you were just very weirdly framed. What? What is that? Is that a beer? Yeah, I'm nervous. You know, it's a new ship. I want to make a good impression. It's 9.15 in the morning. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's a new thing on Fox. And wow. uh, it's called The Oroville. Yes. And uh, it's Seth MacFarlane. Like I said, he's, he's one of my favorite is, dudes. Is he yeah. acting in it? Yes. yes. He's the lead character. Yes. Yeah. Dude, he is so funny. He, oh, my he, God. He is so... an amazing talent. Just so much that it pisses me off. No, well, well here's the interesting thing. And I, I looked forward to it. But there's a couple of things that happened here that are a little too more than coincidental. Oh, a little too much. We created a sci-fi show that was basically going to be hilarious. Yeah. And the main thing was there was only one group that we ever encountered as humans. And that was a, a, the a race called the Krill. The Krill. Yeah. The Krill. The Krill. Out of just nowhere, like, this show comes on and it's got the Krill in it. And I'm like, that's just a little weird that somebody would come up with exactly that. You know well, what I mean? It is a real word. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I understand. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's but, like but, a fish or whatever. For well, it's, it's like, Isn't it like a microscopic organism that yeah. whales yeah, eat? But yeah, but like still, a, yeah, you something. know, I mean... Uh, I'm going to check my computer for hacking. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, we use we use um, software that requires us to be online. Right. And it gets stored on a service. Uh, yeah, I've been storing episodes this, on uh, Amazon's OneDrive. Right, right, right. right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, are, are, there, are there any more coincidences? Um, so far, no. But oh, there are some things. I think so. There's some things that were just distinctly interesting, right. like the lack of a bridge. I mean, there's a bridge there, right. but it's like not a lot of stuff on there. Right. And the way we wrote it it's is... It's just like a, a panel and... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we... Um, what, what was the basic... There's another There's another trailer that's out, and I would have to play it for you so you can see it. But um, in there, they talk about that there's no more governments. The The corporations have taken over. That was a and that was tenant. our biggest fucking yeah. thing on that show that we right. were building, dude. Mm -hmm. Biggest thing. Yeah. yeah. Now, they didn't call it the exact same thing we did, but it's the idea that it's there. Nobody and it's, went and bothered copywriting anything, did they? No, no. I mean, no, we technically... No, just updated uh, uh, our script, so we have that going for us, but... Uh, right. We can use the um, the Celtech server as a, as a device if we wanted to sue, 
Right. But so, I'm kind of like I'm kind of like I do want to still do the show. Yeah, okay. Do the show. I'm gonna do, probably gonna end up doing it. Right. We're just gonna change the name of that right. that race from Krill yeah. to something else. Yeah. But I I do have one quick question. Sure. Okay. You think a show like this has an audience? Oh yes, very much so. Oh, my a, God. a humorous sci-fi. Yeah. Oh yes. Do you know how serious sci-fi people are? Uh, yeah, well, but they appreciate comedy when it's, when it's in the context of their genre. Right. Well, nobody seems to laugh at my Star Wars jokes. Well, yeah. Uh, well, uh, oh, you're, now you're telling me they're not that good. <laughs> okay, I understand. <laughs> uh, no, no, I think they're good. It's just I don't see them because I'm never on Facebook anymore. Yeah. So I went to the therapist. But you are very funny. Thank you. You are very funny. <laughs> so I went to the therapist the other day, and he said, "So why are you seeking marriage therapy?" And she said, "He won't stop making Star Wars references." And I said. Divorce is strong in this one. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of Star Wars, I had to throw yeah. that one in there. Anyway, but no, that's, yeah. So, I mean, we can still do it. That's not an issue. Um, it was just that I've been trying to do all the stuff at the house, trying to get it finished, and then get back to just writing. I just want to write. That's all I want to do. I want to paint. When I can't write because i got writer's block, I can do painting and then freaking write. But now I have started something that is never going to stop. I have a home theater right there. I don't know if you knew that. I, I knew. I saw the pictures. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Dude, yeah. You I just, can't wait to come down and watch yeah. something. Some Dude, you going. just have too many irons in the fire. I know. You right really now, do. I do. Yeah. You always have. Yeah. You, yeah that, that's right. You always have had too many irons. Oh, sure. Make me feel like shit. No, 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 no. <laughs> but you sorry. are more of a shotgun than a rifle. That's true. Yeah. I come faster. <laughs> <laughs> and in both barrels. Oh. <laughs> and I blew my wife's head off. She don't oh. like that. <laughs> I Kurt Cobain my wife. <laughs> and now she just lays there. Oh. That wasn't very nice. That oh, pretty that's sweet. okay. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I don't know. I was voted most likely to shoot up a school. Oh, yeah, yeah that makes In high sense. school. And that was before it became an extracurricular activity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fucked up. But. Intramural. Yeah, exactly. All right, so what else we got, man? Well, I've got, got? I've got a couple things. Okay. i got a couple things. Right. We have Jeopardy, but we'll do that later. Okay. I have a very good joke. A very, very good joke. I've been oh, working on it all week. This. Okay. Two hookers. Not a lot to do. Sitting on a bench in a corner. And it's a very early time. It's a very late time at night. And a lot of people have gone home, gone to bed. There's no business to be had. Nobody is out. The one the one hooker says, uh, Wait, what was that? Yes, we've got business coming. Here comes some business. And the other hooker says, She looks around and says, Well, how do you know that? And then the first hooker says, I smell, I smell a dick. And then the other hooker says, "Oh no, that was me. I just burped." <laughs> <laughs> that, that was terrible. Hey, you that know what? Cinder- right. That was all right. You know what Cinderella did when she got to the ball? What? She gagged. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have another story if you care to hear it. Let's yes. hear your story. It, it, it reflects on the beginning of the show. Okay. Okay. When I was 17, we had just graduated high school. And back then, I, I loved women, but I was terrified of them. Uh, so often, I, I loved movies as well. So mm-hmm. I'd go to the movies by myself a lot, if not by myself, with a friend. And after we graduated, a guy that was sort of a friend in high school, Ralph Ches... Anyway, Ralph. Ralph. He, 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 he was, he was our uh, senior class president. A really nice guy called me up and said, hey, do you want to go see a movie? And I said, that would be great. I love seeing movies. He said, what about Grease? I'm like, okay, not really my thing, but <laughs> sure. I, I saw Saturday Night Fever. John Travolta is an awesome guy. Let's go. So we go and we see Grease. It had some funny stuff. It, it was okay, but it wasn't really oh, my Sandy. kind. Of, yeah, right. It yeah. wasn't really my thing. So we left, and he's there. Do you want to do something else? And I said, Nah, I'm good. Let's just go home. He's there. Are you sure? I said, Fine. So we go back, you know, and I get out and I said, Hey, that, that was really a lot of fun. Call me sometime. We'll go do it again. And he said, Okay. So uh, I never heard from him again. So. Ten years go by, and and, and we're uh, at our uh, uh, high school reunion. 
and everybody ten years later is still broke into the same cliques. And I, yeah. I was I was a person yeah. who sort of got along with everybody, so I didn't really click. So I sat at a table with this guy who was a sweet guy when we were in high school, and turned into a, such a dick as an adult. Oh, One of those guys where you say, "Hey, you know, I saw so and so today," and you go. <laughs> It's like, what are you laughing about? <laughs> but anyways, he was like, he's he's harmless. So, and then Ralph came in. And Ralph came in. He's got a leather jacket. I thought, man, he rode up in a Harley. He's looking cool. I said, Ralph, come sit with us. He was like, yeah, whatever, you know. And he came up and he sat with us. But he really could give a fuck about being there. I'm like, what? Yeah. So, um, I didn't see him after that. And then like 20 years goes by. And I'm in my 40s. I was like, oh, I was on a gay date. <laughs> I didn't get it, but oh, he was shit. asking me out, and he wanted to go somewhere after the movie and hang out and hold uh, hands at and a maybe bar. make out or something. <laughs> Stallions, like, oh, dude! <laughs> and you know, I'm not inclined that way. But if I was, be I was okay looking, you know. But but I was like, wow, I, it just didn't really work for me. But that was my gay date, so. Gay dating. Hey, I'll yeah. make you a deal. This guy will suck your dick off if you let us go. <laughs> Contrary to what you believe, not everyone in the industry is a homosexual. How about this deal? He'll suck my dick while you watch and jerk off. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was exactly it. That, was, in fact, was the original ending of Grease. <laughs> yeah, dudes are getting blown. That's just you know by another dude. And Sandy's like, "What about me?" And she's like, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> are you guys making a gay reference towards John Travolta? Summer loving. Oh uh, well, John. You know, I mean, <laughs> summer loving happened so fast. Summer loving took it in the ass. <laughs> uh, tell me more. <laughs> Go grease lightning up my ass tonight. <laughs> Dude, that whole movie was nothing but a gay oh, reference. Yeah, the absolutely. whole fucking thing, man. Yeah. The whole thing. What do you mean? It was a chick flick. No. Oh, yeah. Dude, believe it or not. Yeah. And this is weird. This is weird. But that exact same movie was my first date. <laughs> Eight years old. Eight years old. Went and saw that fucking movie in the theater oh, while I was there. And I yeah. got close to the girl. And I put my, you know, did the stretch and the arm thing. And then she sort of just, she looked over at me and she just kept watching the movie. Oh, okay. I think she did it like a pity yeah. date or something. You, you, know? didn't, you didn't have popcorn or anything? Uh, well, or? yeah. Yeah, I got oh, that. See, okay, that must be why Ralph said, hey, you want me to get some popcorn? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Why? why? <laughs> yeah. you Go can ahead. Re- you can reach in the popcorn. Reach in the bottom. <laughs> reach in the bottom. That's where the good buttery shit's at. Oh, I'm not really into popcorn. <laughs> I'll Thanks, take some Uber. Maybe some Ubers. Or... <laughs> yeah, uh, nuts. <laughs> it's, it's so weird that there used to be this division of people where you would make fun of somebody who was gay. Yeah. You know, like, Three's Company is a great example of that. You watch that and, like, half of the show's are about mistakenly being gay. Right. Or something happening that seemed like he was gay. Or whatever. You know, like, Mr. Furley used to think that Jack was gay. Well, I did too. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Because if you ain't tanking fucking two bitches in your house, that's fucked up. I was going to say, uh, what was their names again? Janet? Janet and Chrissy. And Chrissy, yeah. If you didn't even want to even get a little of something of that. Right. Really? So, yeah. yeah, well. And it's just really weird because it was at that time period where we'd just gotten out of free love. You know, and we were in the 70s, the mixed up 70s, and we had this disco era going on, and everybody in their bell bottoms and their frilly shirts and fucked up shit. And they were making fun of people who were gay. But they really weren't making fun of them. They were just funning them. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you know, oh, I don't want to be that. You know, I don't even mistake it as that. Jump forward 40 fucking years. And here we are looking at him like, if anybody were to make a comment or anything in a movie about not being gay or not wanting to be gay, they're going to be ostracized. Well, absolutely. It's just ridiculous. I well. think it's bullshit. It's because uh, <laughs> the sense of the uh, uh, society is becoming humorless. As far as right. uh, it's becoming very sensitive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cream did you see uh, uh, Gran Torino with? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, he says, "Look, I'm a Polak. They're a Jew, or whatever. Right. You know, I mean, everybody makes fun of uh, of of their. Uh, uh, it's actually uh, the outside of what they really are. It's right. just uh, the, the very surface essence of what they are. The show. And people make fun of it. They make right. fun of it if you limp. They make fun of you if you got weird hair or whatever. Right. And, and and no, everybody's too sensitive now. You can't do that. Right. Well, you the know? only people you can still make fun of are fat people. 
Oh, God, yes. Yes, that's the only thing. Dan and I have had that conversation numerous yes. times before. Fat, fat people, fat and people. I, I am wondering if if stupid people are still off, uh, still okay to... It Damn. depends on what. It, yeah, it depends. If you, say, if you do yeah. like a Polish joke, then right. yeah, it's probably not appropriate. Right. But, you know, if you're just, you know, making it like blonde jokes would be a really good idea here when it comes to what could still be accepted. Like, oh, great. I got I got a blonde joke for you. As a matter of fact, it's pretty Ooh. funny. So this guy walks into a bar and he's blind. He walks up to the bar and he orders a drink. Bartender comes over and gives him a drink and he goes, uh, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you a blonde joke. Bartender says, it's a woman, stops and says, hey, mister, listen, I'll give you five reasons why you don't want to do that. First of all, this is a gay bar, and I'm the I'm a blonde way, uh, bartender. Over there to your right is a, is a woman. She is a pro wrestler. She will, you know. Over there is another woman. She's blonde. She's a truck driver. This other woman, and anyway, she goes on and explains that there's these five blondes in this in this room that are going to tear him apart. He goes, oh. she goes. So, do you still want to tell that joke? And he's like, <sighs> he deals with it for a second, then he just goes, not if I'm going to tell the thing five times. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, so I'm sorry, that is funny. Yeah. Man. So I think the the idiot, their stupidity nature, and it's it's funny too because we know there's a difference there. We know that there are blonde people that just aren't stupid. It's just right. a funny right. way exactly. of saying this yes. idiot person. Yes. So. Yes. But yeah, that's right. uh, that's and and you know, my wife hates blonde jokes. She <laughs> she's blonde, so she thinks the blonde joke is just you know, you're tailoring it for me, and I'm like, no, nobody's tailoring it for you. And you know, you it's could, just you know. but you know, those jokes are. Uh, interchangeable. Yes, like, yes, like, they are. Like take blonde out and put in Pollock. Yes. Right. Or take right. that out and put in dumb white guy. Right. Yes. When when's dumb white guy going to come? Jokes going to come out. They already are. Yeah, they're they coming. Are. Out. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, the it, it's weird because white men certainly do have the advantage because just because they can drive th- through downtown and not necessarily get pulled over. Right. Yeah. But in media. White men are constantly being portrayed as the dumb guy. Right. Dumb yes. dad. Yeah. Dumb dad can't even start the lawnmower. Right. Dumb dad doesn't know how to turn my car on. Dumb right. dad, dumb dad. Yeah. So we've got that uh, 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 archetype that's being built up. But uh, uh, even with that being uh, said, uh, white guys still got the advantage. It's just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, I, you, you I, wouldn't you wouldn't trade it. I agree with that, but it hasn't always been that way. Oh my god, like, no! Like, um, oh my god, no! Uh, one of my customers just got done reading a book, and he's so into this book, and he's telling me about this book every time he comes in. The, uh, the name of the book is something like um, the privilege, the white privilege, or something like that. Yeah, and it the, it's designed to make you feel guilty for being white. Oh sure. Now you know. <laughs> Why should anybody feel guilty about what color they are? Or, I mean, I, I mean, if, if there is such thing as white privilege, which there is in yeah. this country, sure, and in South Africa, there ain't no white privilege in China. No, there ain't no white privilege in Japan. Right. So why feel guilty because you're white and in America? You had nothing to do with it. You had you had you did nothing to bring on this white privilege. Right. So why feel guilty about it? Yeah, but that's the thing, and that's what they shame you with, is that you have that white privilege, and you don't even use it, or you don't even know that you have it, or that, you know, you're the the arrogant one thinking that, well, why should I, you know, worry about something that I don't even consider having? And that's why they get you every single fucking time. Right. And there's a TV show that, or I'm sorry, it started out as a movie, it was an independent movie, and now it's a TV show on Netflix uh, called Dear White People. Mm, I haven't seen that. Yeah. Dear White People came after the show. Basically, it was a primarily black college uh, that some white people, you know, were attending, but mostly black. And uh, just the difference between, you know, that, that privilege for the most part. And what it kind of turned out as this radio station that was on there, I believe this is the plot, if I'm not mistaken, because I couldn't watch the whole thing. It was kind of racist, really. Um, was basically set to, okay, here is, uh, you know, the privileged white Let's explain to them 
why they're privileged. And this woman would go on the radio and sit there and explain, Dear white people, here's what you need to know about this. And it was kind of informative, but not for me. Because I knew, you know, most of that stuff already existed. And I knew right. about it anyway. Sure. I'm multicultural. At least that's the way I look at it, or I try to think. He's well read and erudite. <laughs> Very good. And in a homo sapien relationship. How about that? <laughs> you don't see that every day. <laughs> look, he's with a homo. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's, I mean, white privilege sucks, and I agree with you exactly. I don't feel like I should be guilty for the fact that I do that because I don't take advantage of white privilege. Right, right. And it definitely, if you add that to that whole statement, then yes, I think it should be a situation where people aren't going to be like, oh my God, you white fuck, you know, because we're just guys that, you know, just tell it like it is, right. you know, we're not yeah. trying to walk around being like, you know, you, you, and you, you need to get the fuck off my lawn. You know, it's nothing like that. It's... Yeah. Everybody does the best within their circumstances. Right. It's, it, <laughs> and it's not fair. It's just what it is. I mean, and you do... When you have the awareness, when you have the opportunity, you reach down and you try and help people as best as possible. I mean, right. Everybody does. Well, most everybody does, but you can't do it for everybody. Um, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> Dude, I that happens when, to us all the time. I hate when that happens. Exactly. Every week. Oh, yes. yeah, Every yeah, week. Something I'm on about and then I totally forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Oh, and this one time at band camp, I stuck a flute in my pussy. Okay. You I too. didn't know she had a cat. <laughs> yeah. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> cat oh, was unhappy. Something else I want to talk about. Okay, let's do it. Okay, you were talking about, <laughs> Jeff. Okay. Uh, some sort of... Uh, invasive procedure or something you were having a couple of, uh, weeks ago i don't remember what it was i don't know if it was a colonoscopy or, but anyways i want to tell you the story about my otoscopy Ooh, otoscopy yeah, yes i i i had been to the I urologist i had that uh, yet. yeah i had been to the urologist i pissed i let him finger me and everything and oh geez everything seemed to be okay <laughs> but i got a call from the receptionist saying he wants to have an otoscopy and i said oh all right can you come in june 6th it's fine so I go in, and what an otoscopy is, is they sit you on the table, put your knees up and spread them, and a nurse, this one was male, although I've had a beautiful Puerto Rican nurse do it before, oh, lovely. grabs your junk, sprays it with this cold spray so you can't feel anymore. Then the doctor comes in with a telescope with a, uh, a, a, a hose about the thickness of a pencil, and sticks it in your junk oh, shit. and pushes it down and says you're going to feel some discomfort Fuck. at this point yeah. and at that point you feel like somebody has just shoved a pencil thick object into your bladder oh, Jesus. it's exactly what it feels like and you go oh, okay and he gets in there and he's like turning the telescope and saying well it looks pretty good hang on a second okay yeah it looks pretty good we're gonna go out oh, now geez. you know and uh, you might piss blood for a while oh, well, fuck. thanks <laughs> so you guys are a little bit younger than me but hey give you something to look forward oh, to oh christ on a cross i don't want to do that man i'm not into dude i don't even want to go get a glaucoma test where they blow a little bit of air in your eyes i know i sure as hell don't want to get a hose stuffed up my urethra oh i wish it was a hose it's more like a gooseneck microphone stand. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> Damn, your dick's not playing like the mic I thought it would be. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I that was dude, stunned that's... they could get it in there. It was just Otoscopy. Amazing. You know, Otoscopy, did, yeah. did, I'm asking questions I really don't want to know. But, okay, they spray your junk with that to get it frozen, to get it numb. That's just for the outside. Yeah. What about all that shit, you know? That... Didn't feel it at all until they pushed into my bladder. Then I realized, ah, oh, this is the other side of prison sex. If you get, <laughs> get a teeny skinny guy with a teeny skinny junk, and he wants to get it on the front end. <laughs> hey, man, have a little DP, you know? Get it there. Then, then you got a problem. And that's what it's about. <laughs> somebody, somebody blowing their load in your bladder. Oh, lovely. That's now just we're disgusting. talking infection. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Morning sex is always great. Can mm -hmm. I get your doctor's number? Unless you're in prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups. The police, who fabricate crime, and the district attorneys, who prosecute the offenders for their bullshit. These are their stories. 
Nice. Ah, my baby! My baby! <laughs> That's what I meant. You're deaf. <laughs> Sorry. 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 That's all right. Anyways. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Hey, you were talking, you were going off about Tom Cruise and his new scary mummy. Yes. Yeah. And uh, all I got to say is, I mean, any horror movie, we know this, uh, mm-hmm. having made them, you have breaks which are like uh, comic relief to, to right. ease you out. So right. there's going to be that in the movie. Also, do you remember the Seventh Voyage of Sinbad? And yeah. Movies like that? Yeah. The one with the claymation. Yeah. And the at the time, those things were scary as shit. I mean, even now, if you watch them, it's like, okay, I know some guy's manipulating a little doll there, but right. it's still pretty freaky. Yeah, it is crazy. So yeah. I don't think it's going to be any scarier than uh, a, a 10-year-old can handle. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't necessarily think it's so much that as, why do we have to take movies that already exist, reboot them, <laughs> And then make them completely opposite of what they used to be. Brendan Fraser was having fun. He was doing a good job. I thought he was a great, you know, archaeologist or, or Indiana Jones type. And I, and I didn't really see any re- reason or need to bring back that franchise. I unless they continued it on. Right. But they're not. They're actually no. rebooting the whole thing. And it's all, let's make it as scary and as wicked as we possibly oh, can. Absolutely. But they're, they're desperate for money. They'll, I mean, there's only so many plots in the universe. And Shakespeare wrote great stories about all of them. Right. So you take what's been before and you put in a new cast and you do it again. They've exactly. done it with Batman. They've done it with Superman. They've, they've done, done it with, with Spider-Man. Yeah. Of course, they're going to do it again. Uh, Frankenstein. How many Frankenstein franchises are franchise yeah been or Dracula's years. I or mean the mummy that. is relatively new because that sort of died off in the 30s right they, they didn't right. really do anything through the 40s and 50s I so think the last like, one back then was like Abbott's, Abbott Costello, Costello right yeah, exactly like in the, the 40s mummy. yeah so um you know anything to make money they're they're, they're scrabbling for straws uh, uh well, that's there, the there's thing. no ingenuity well that, exactly there's no originality Hollywood has lost that as a base. They don't right. have that anymore. Now it's just, let's reformulate and refabricate this shit. Let's just do this. Let's go from what was happy and fun-loving at one point to serious and, 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 and dark and, and, you know, just bad. You know, not, not necessarily so much that same fun-loving time it was before. And that's the problem that bothers me the most is that why, why can't they take a look outside the box and see these other people like yourself, me, you know, other people that are writing original stories and pick up on those things. Absolutely. There's only a a small number of bean counters that are actually calling the shots. Right. Not looking at the funny sci-fi series that are out there. Right. You know, instead of giving it to the people who are already making $125 million, the pricks, although I love you, Seth MacFarlane. Yeah. (laughs) I do too, but I have that. I have the same way. I love him. I love his work, but man, he's a fucking bastard for stealing my material. Yeah, yeah. Well, not my material, but I could have come up with it sooner right. or later. Stuff you would, yeah, we would have eventually but, thought about. But don't you guys think this Hollywood uh, reign of terror is coming to an end with things like the internet, Netflix, to an extent. Um, to an extent, you still have to have money to pre- produce the big, big movies. The big uh, 3D movies on the giant screens with the incredible sound. And, uh, uh, I mean, independent movies can still be made and still be made well. But with the technology that's out there and the money required to access it, you're still going to need the money from the studios. It's just the way it is. Yeah. You, but but uh, adding on to that, Ted, did you not love Oh, Ted? I love Ted. Oh, yeah. my God, that little bear. Like, you would not cut a hole in that thing and <laughs> fuck that thing. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. Don't lie to me. Exactly. <laughs> You'd be spilling loads into Ted until his stuffing was just a crusty mess. Sorry. You don't mind the pot, you? I get migraines. Oh, absolutely. That's me fine. too. Yeah. I'm going to get a huge migraine in the parking lot in about 20 minutes. <laughs> we love Ted. Ted's awesome. Yeah. But Ted, was, Ted was my second gay date. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. I do not sound like Peter Griffin. <laughs> he says that in the middle of a party in the first Ted. <laughs> Truly awesome. But, yeah, no, I, I totally agree. There's um, there's some originality. Like, a really great thing, and this is where Seth MacFarlane's coming from out in left field. And I know for a fact he got the idea of making the Orville, which is this new show he's got. Mm-hmm. He made that with the idea of the auspice that I went under and that we're missing out on some sci-fi hilarity. Yes. There's no sci-fi funny shit out there anymore. There's, mm-hmm. there's not. There used to be, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it, and there's a huge following for it. Firefly. 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 When, when it was out, dude, 
nobody knew about it because Fox was just fucking it left and right. Absolutely. They started on episode two instead of episode one. Right. Then they went back to episode one and sort right. of explained everything. Mm-hmm. And then now they started going on and they're thinking look, the people look, are going to watch this. Look Jesus who you're man. dealing with. Look who you're dealing with, Fox. The only hit shows that they have come up with is cartoons. Right. And that's only because right. they were lucky to land Seth MacFarlane. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. And exactly. their news, which... Oh, well, it's independent. Doing right. that. Yes, that's it's independent. Global. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And it's weird because they had The Simpsons for decades. It's the greatest or, or the longest lasting, still relevant cartoon show in the world, right. and they still kept fucking up. I mean, yeah. uh, canceling Family Guy, <laughs> right. uh, American Dad is yeah. like, okay, well, I guess this is our real thing now. We should uh, exploit yeah. it. Well, American Dad actually got picked back up. That's still on. It's on TBS. They oh, just good. showed a new episode last night. Mm, that'll make my that. wife happy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, she can't record. stand American Dad. Oh, really? really? She calls him. He looks like he's got an ass on his face. Ass <laughs> face. Really That's what does. she calls yeah. him. Peter's got chin admit. balls. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, USA. But Peter sucks his own tits, so that <laughs> works yeah, out. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's gross. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I got one last thing if you're interested. Sure. Uh, yeah, they don't it, 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 uh, It's like a story from Trump to the rapture. Okay. Okay, the Christian right... Okay. Uh, uh, they they are uh, part of Trump's people, okay? Right. And uh, you you've got uh, the Christian right. You've got Republicans who didn't know who else to vote for, right? And uh, you've got people who uh, love the fact that he comes off as a bully and a racist and everything, right? Right. And then you've got the Christian right. Now the other people are going to definitely vote because they just. Don't have anybody else to vote for, right, and, right. And, the, and the bullies just love it, man. I got a reason to beat my wife, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Trump would do it. I'm going to do That's it. Right. Hey, yeah. that, 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 that Muslim woman went into Walmart. I'm going to trip her and make her fall on the face because Trump's president now, bitch. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but the Christian right are like, oh, if this guy keeps fucking us, the rapture's going to come and we're going straight to heaven. So Trump, uh, uh, I'm not saying he isn't a smart man or, 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 or a good businessman, but his moves so far are turning us inward. They're losing our allies. We're becoming isolationist. Right. And among those isolationist people, you got people who love Trump and people who hate Trump. So you've got a little mini civil war going on there, and we're basically all alone. Right. Again, the Christian right's happy about this, and they're like, oh, thank God. God, let the missiles come. The rapture's going to come. All these fuckers are going to get blown to hell. And we're going right to heaven. Right. So we're bring it on, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> to an extent, I think you're right. Um, there's also a couple of other groups in there, too. Freedom United's another good one. Oh, who are they? They are what used to be the tea bagger. I mean, tea party. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they were still around. I thought yeah. they were like... Uh, nope, they're still there. They're called okay. the Freedom... Yeah, isn't it Freedom Right? Or no, I what have is it? no idea. Freedom it's, United. I think yeah, is what it's okay. called. Yeah. yeah. It's Freedom something. I can't remember if it's United, but I'm pretty sure it is. But yeah, that's who they used to be, the Tea Party. And okay, give yourself a new name, make it something completely different. Right. Changes nothing. They still have the same thoughts, same feelings, and they were the ones that were pissed off about Trump. And they were the ones that were making a big big ass stink. They were like, eh, you know, we're gonna send all of our people that we have in Congress that are part of our movement to fight against you, which means Republicans fighting against the president. And there are a lot of people, Republicans, who are coming out against President Trump. Mm. A really good one is John McCain. Mm. And oh, I can yeah, actually there, see... There's a very good, trustworthy soul. No, yeah. no, no, not that. Yeah. Not that, but did you, you saw what Trump said about him, right? You know, Oh, if I'd have been in a war, and you know, and, uh, oh, right. and I'd have gotten taken prisoner... Right. Uh, no, yeah, I'm yeah. not... You're, I like you're he- no good. I like heroes that don't get captured. Mm. Right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. 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 And they're painting him as senile now because right. he is pretty fucking old. But uh, yeah. Um, yeah. One of the things that Trump ignores, and again, it's only to the benefit of the racists and the people who want to keep us isolationist, right. is the fact that it is a global world now. And it's like a big daisy chain. Everybody's fucking or getting <laughs> fucked at one time. That's exactly and right. if he decides to pull out of the daisy chain, guess what? Somebody's not getting some ass or somebody's not getting some suck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that screws everybody up. The only one who's benefiting at this point is Russia. Even China has been in bed with America for so long that, you know, they're like, hey, you know. We own half of you. We, we work, no, we work like <laughs> hell, or the Russia, or the Chinese do. 
Right. We work our people so hard they want to commit suicide, but we can't invent a fucking thing. Right. Americans and their ingenuity and their little bit of freedom, they're the ones who create. If we don't have something to build because they don't create anything, we're fucked. So we need you yeah. to stop hiding, stop stop pissing Russia off, and stop pissing off Germany and everybody else. Yeah. We need those people. And that's, that's the sad part because... Uh, uh, you know, as much as America First, man, I'm down with it. I, I would totally, yeah, <laughs> I would die for this country in a second. I'm all red dawn and shit, you right. know. <laughs> Absolutely. If the Cubans came uh, flying in here, man, I'd be the first one to grab a deer rifle and start hunting some. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But uh, <laughs> but the reality of it is, we uh, we need to figure out how to get along, and he just doesn't know how. Right. Yeah. He's thinking his deals, and we've already had countries that have been our allies for 50 years come right out and say, well, we can't rely on the United States anymore because have of that they, day. Right. Have they really right. been our allies? Yeah. yeah. Do, Germany? We, do we, have they really been our allies? Yeah. yeah. How have they yeah. not been our allies? We've done tremendous <laughs> business with them. I mean, uh, 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 let's just take the obvious ones, bikes and cars. Right. You know? Uh, yeah. Uh, I and, believe, I believe given, given a chance, any country would slit our throat. Sure. Oh, good. Of course. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We all know that, but the thing is, is we have that saber to rattle. Yeah. Look at our nuclear missile. That's the thing. And that's the reason why we have the allies that we do, because we are the united front that actually prevents Russia from being able to take right. over stuff. Hey, man, they said the Iron Curtain was down when, when we dropped the wall in Berlin, but that's not the truth, dude. It's still isolated. They're still on their side, and we're still on our side. There's no difference in there. And that's why I think when we call those people allies, they really are allies. But they, re you know, require us to be performing. And Trump is not performing. He's, right. you know, and Melania has even said so. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> this I'm going to be in New York and you're not fucking me up here. <laughs> this is my favorite part of the show. Yeah. Political porn, man. I was listening you know, to this the other night and saying, oh, yeah, man, give it to me. Yeah. Shoot my face. Shoot out my face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it goes back, though, to what we were talking about in the car. Yeah. Nobody's going to change anybody's mind anymore. Oh, no. It's it's all stalemated. No, no. Sure. So right. we could talk to her blue in the face here, mm -hmm. and it, it, <clears throat> it's going to be the same tomorrow. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely. going to be the same next yeah. year. It's going to be the mm -hmm. same five yes. years. Yes. The people who are in power mm -hmm. are only... Their only concern is keeping their power. Yes. Right. It's and, everybody. That's Democrats. That's Republicans. It's everybody. Yes. And money. They still have to have their money. Dude, congressman, have you ever seen the distinguished gentleman? Was it Eddie Murphy uh, movie? Uh, bits yes, and pieces. Yes. Dude, that was an exact, a beautiful example of exactly what happens in Congress. Most people create foundations, and then the oil company puts a little money in their foundation, and then mm -hmm. the chlorine company puts a little money in there. The coal miners put their little money in there. Yeah. Dude, their foundation grows to like $90 million. It's huge. And mm -hmm. then what do you do? And then you write it all off. Yeah. You well, just be like, oh, shit, you know, we had to spend money on this, and oh, the CEO of the company who tends, or the foundation happens to be this senator, he got paid $90 million. Right. That's as easy as it goes, man. It's just that simple. It's all very, very, very bad in Congress, in, in just in, in general. It's a chess game. Did you see Charlie Wilson's war? Yes. With Tom Hanks? Yeah, Tom Hanks. Yeah. Okay, well, his, his thing was uh, uh, freeing Afghanistan from the Russians because, hey, we needed a foothold against the Russians. Right. Well, once we did, guess what? The people who were in uh, charge or possibly in charge in, in Afghanistan were the Taliban. Right. And uh, they wound up turning against us. And using our own shit. Right, right, yeah. using our own shit against us. So it's like... I mean, we put dictators into power. I think, good, they'll pe keep these people uh, contained for us, but then they get too big for uh, them, uh, their position, and everybody's like, hey, you got to take care of these people. So we go in and we kill, uh, 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 what's his name? Hussein, Saddam yeah, Hussein. Saddam, yeah. And uh, everybody's like, yay, but when you kill Saddam Hussein, all the various factions that were being held down and kept in control, then they get to make noise. And, right, and, Shiites and, and Sunni Muslims. Right, right. And, yeah. And it just goes on and on and on. I mean, you, you want to be as, uh, for lack of a better word, fair as possible. Conscientious you want, objector. You want everybody to have good things. I right. mean, but uh, ideologically, you want everybody to, you want everybody's children to do well and stuff. But the fact is, if you've got a uh, country who's poisoning 
their people against America. Like Syria. Right. Mm -hmm. um, those children don't really have a chance anyway because we're going to come against them. Right. Yeah. Um, but by the same token, America is an evil fucking nation. Sure. Absolutely. I mean, to, and to an extent, yeah, I even see it. I know we're a gluttonous nation. I know we do all seven evils. Right. Every single day, everybody does something that's against those seven right. evils, which is not a biblical thing. It's actually like uh, Dante wrote it. Was it the Dante Seven Sins? Seven yeah, Deadly Sins? Seven Deadly Sins, right. yes. So Pride, gluttony, and the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> Slut? <laughs> I mean, wait a minute. That's not it. Lust. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but that's, that's the thing. I mean, we are, when you compare us to others, we are free. We're available. We're open. We're able to do these we things. We tolerate a lot of the shit that other countries won't tolerate. Right. Exactly. Yeah. There, they're like, oh, we're going by the book, and that's exactly what you need to go by. If we were to do that exact same thing here, we would be back to the English um, church. Yeah. Way back when, when the church was like, well, you can't say that because it's against the Holy Word, and, you know, we're going to make up stuff, and, you know, you got to follow exactly what it says. And, no, oh, there is flat. Fuck that. You know what I mean? And <laughs> yeah, but you, dude, that's I'm dead serious. Yeah, yeah. Galileo, um, Copernicus is the one that figured it out. They tr they trashed his ass. They totally tore him out. Galileo said, "You know what? Every other thing I'm looking at in the sky is round. Don't tell me we're on a flat disc that's just round." So he went off and told people, and they scorned him too. <gasps> they more than scorned them. They said, "You're a heretic," and right. he knew where that was going. Exactly. Burning at the stake. Yeah. So he said. Guess what? I, I guess I was wrong. Right. I'm going to rescind that until he yeah. was on his deathbed and he said, right. fuck that. This is what I mean. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, go ahead and burn me. I'm going to die tonight, tonight anyway. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But Don't teach me in history books. Fuck them. Yeah. Yeah. And it did. Uh, but no, that's the thing. I mean, to be honest with you, it, one of one. Okay. Dan, this is for you. Mm -hmm. And it, this, I don't really want to like convince you that that Trump is an asshole okay I don't want to do that that's not what my, my objective is here my objective is to try and get both of us to a nature where we are like taking a look at things in the nat in natural ways instead of going oh yeah you know what fuck that because that's not the way that Republicans think or that the Democrats think or that this this or that I just want us to be open minded and take a look like I was saying earlier about mm -hmm. it's not about left or right it's about right and wrong and that's true that's exactly what it is we can't take a look at this situation and just be like well I'm a staunch Republican and that's why I believe everything he says or I'm a staunch Democrat and that's why I believe everything she says we can't we can't do that okay I agreed agreed but I'm not sticking up for Trump here, but I, I but I will stick up for him a little bit. Okay. <laughs> so you are sticking up for Trump. Well, well I'm no. only sticking no, up for what's yeah, right. Yeah, I'm only sticking yeah, up for yeah, what for what gotcha. for what I. For, yeah. And I said this with Obama. It ain't just him. Right. You have 500 other members up there that that, that swamp needs drained. Right. And well, yeah, absolutely. Trump. Trump said that the yep. swamp needs drained. But he's not no, doing it. Whether yet. he does it or not, yeah. the proof will be in the pudding. And then we'll get to analyze that in three and a half years from sure. now. Sure. Right. Yeah. Well, but he's not the, again, he's not the only problem. Right. And we have a lot of problem with bureaucracy in this country, too. Right. Um, so it's not just our elected officials. Look at the FCC for crying out loud. Look I know. At, look at the uh, Food and Drug Administration. Yeah. Right. Overstepping regulations. I get that, you know, and I understand. Yeah. And I see what he's trying to do possibly with that. But my question to you is this. If it weren't Donald Trump, let's say it were Al Gore, okay? And he went in and did exactly what Trump did or has been doing. The stuff he successfully completed, like removing regulations over things or kidding us out of the, the climate accord. That stuff only helps his businesses. If it were Al Gore, if it were Hillary Clinton, and they were in business, and they refused to step down from those business or put them in a blind trust, you would only see everything that they're doing as a potentiality of being that thing that would help their businesses in the long run. Maybe, you know what I'm saying? Maybe, yes. And I can't argue with that. Right. I, I did, I, again, I'm talking to, I was talking to Roger in the car right. on the way up here, down here. <laughs> <clears throat> and I am so politically exhausted. Right. That I don't pay attention anymore. Try right. to so you, it you could yeah. you could say Donald Trump went and took a dump on such and somebody such and such somebody's car. You heard that on the news. Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> he shit right on Angela Merkel's <laughs> <laughs> BMW. Vet, man. Yeah, her BMW. Yeah, exactly. 
no, barbarian. This, <clears throat> okay, so like, here's what I mean by this, okay? I'll give you a great example of what I, what I mean by us trying to get things figured out, okay? Let's say there's a box, okay? It's a square box all the way around, and it's of this room. Let's just make it this room. Okay. This studio. We close off this box, okay? And we completely seal this box, okay? You, me, and Roger are sitting in here. Would you rather be, want to be, with just us three or with nine other people in the room? Who's cooking? <laughs> Who's farting? <laughs> Nobody's cooking. But imagine this. It's completely sealed off. You're going to run out of air. Mm. You're eventually going to run out of air. So would you rather it be run out of air with just three people in it? Or would you rather it run out of air with ten people in it? Now here's the reason why I'm going with this. Okay? And, and where I'm heading with this. Think about it. The amount of carbon dioxide produced by each human in the room is eventually going to wear out all of the oxygen in the room. And you're going to kill. Yeah. You're going to die. Either way, you're going to die. It doesn't matter. More than likely, let's say 10 hours later, you're going to be let out of the box. You're going to try and do everything you can. If it's just us three, you're going to try and do everything you can to preserve your oxygen and stay alive as much as you can. But if it's 10 people in the room and you have to convince those 10 people to breathe slowly in order to live and 10 hours get released from the box, it's not going to work. You're going to die. Okay? That's what climate change is. Seriously. Straight across the top, that's what climate change is. The more, peop- the more people we have, listen, the more people we have, the more that breathe. Think about it. No. Would you consider yourself smarter than a scientist? I wouldn't. I, I, I'm, I consider us probably some of the most smartest people I know. And I, got, I would not think I, of myself better. I got to piss. Okay. Okay. Run upstairs. Mm. Run along. I We're going to start what, screaming down here. N- now would be a good time to drop two commercials. Okay, let's do the commercials. Let's do both of them. Oh, we're getting too fucking All serious right. with ourselves. We are. <laughs> Here we go. How many times have you seen a World War II vet with a tattoo of a pretty girl on his arm? Huh? Or the name of the army company on the forearm of a Korean War vet? I wasn't in the <laughs> Korean War. Or have you ever seen the Navy vet with the name of their ship or sub inked on their arm? Sure, I'd like a sub. When we were trying to figure out how to get the name of our tattoo company out there, We had a brilliant idea. We at Lock Studios decided to visit every nursing home and senior center in the central Pennsylvania area. Where the hell am I? And to top it all off, we gave each seasoned citizen at the Golden Years Senior Retirement Center a free tattoo. Who the hell am I? Yep. We wanted people to remember our names. So, Grandma now has www.lockstudiostattoo.com right across her forehead. My head hurts. In show of our appreciation, we re-inked every single one of those vets. We redid the lines of that USN 670 Atlantic Fleet Resupply Command Get tattoo. Off my lawn. We redrew the lines of the Army Company B skull and crossbones of the Korean War vet. Damn dirty jinx. We put new color and new life in the Rosie the Riveter tattoo from the World War II vet's arm. I did that. And to help a few of the residents and nursing staff out, we went the extra mile and needled some of them with helpful tats, like, if found, please return to Dementia Ward, or, Please call the Brethren Home at 555-1212 for assistance. My brother's not home. And as a public service, we even marked some with diabetic or arthritic. Don't worry. Most of these precious senior citizens are not even going to feel any pain, let alone remember any of this. And don't be alarmed when Grandma exposes barbells or other nipple jewelry. And now my boobs hurt. We also do body piercing. So when you think of your next tattoo or body piercing, think of Locks Studios. Visit us in person at 12 Baltimore Street, Gettysburg, PA. Or call area code 717 398 2241 to make an appointment. And check us out in some of our best work on the internet at www.lockstudiostattoo.com. Tell them you heard of them here on the Jeff and Dan Show and receive no money off your next tattoo. The Jeff and Jan Show? Who are they? My smoking friends. Well, you are selective as I am about which piece to use during consumption of delectable cannabinoids, then you choose glass. And when you need a piece of glass, you need our friends at Nature's Way Glass, 3286 East Harrisburg Pike, Middletown, Pennsylvania. Nature's Way has over 8,000 glass pieces, everything from two-inch pipes all the way up to the six-foot aqua pipes. This place has it all, two-inch pipes, four-inch pipes, Sherlock styles, bubble styles, Gandalf styles, peanut designs, 
collar changers, glass elephant pipes, the hard to find dog pipes, the entire animal collection. Don't even get me started about the water pipe selection. They have three inch water pipes, 12 inch water pipes, and the six foot annihilator. All the brand names are here. Puffco, Mothership, Gold and Silver, X-Hive, and new to the store this year is Pure Tame. Selection and best prices are what you're going to get when you shop at Nature's Way Glass. So be sure to stop into their showroom at 3286 East Harrisburg Bike in Middletown, or you can visit them at their own website, naturewayglass.com. You can also find Nature's Way Glass on Facebook at Nature's Way Glass. Area code 717-944-1960. You better write this down. I doubt you're going to remember. Well, it looks like we're back. And we're back. We're back. We're black. We're back in black. All right. What's happening? Yeah, we didn't get a chance to get the Roger hear that commercial, so he's going to have to listen to it when he gets home. <laughs> Where is he? Yeah, I think he went upstairs to take a piss. At least I hope he's all right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. There he is. There he comes. Here I come to save the day. <laughs> here I come to shave you gay. Oh my! Hey, tonight's Powerball is worth thirty-seven or yeah, thirty-seven, three hundred seventy-five million. You get a ticket? No shit! I didn't know that. And Usually, right about this point, it's where I'm like, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna take a chance." <laughs> a, I think it's one in like four hundred and seventy-nine million or something is your chance of being able to win it or yeah, something, something well, crazy. We played yeah. a we played a special commercial tonight, Raj. You'll oh, have yeah? to listen to it later on when I you will. get to the home and listen with the wife or whatever. I'm sure it was awesome. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. It was a forced commercial. We call it a forced commercial. Why, why force? Because uh, you know the company didn't like go out of their way to be like, "Hey, man, make a commercial for us." No, <laughs> we just kind of volunteered them. Yeah, <laughs> we volunteered them to have a funny commercial made. Now there's going to be some dude like, "I want my tattoo done." <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, so uh, did I miss any talk about pussy and boogers while I was gone? No, nope, no pussy not and yet. boogers. Uh, but are we ready to play Jeopardy? Jeff's oh God, got yes. herpes. Sorry, Jeff. Yeah. Well, Jeff, right. you want herpes. Yes, I want herpes. Do we have some theme music? We have some... Oh, shit. We don't have any theme music. Uh-oh. All right. <laughs> Death Metal. Done. Da, 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 da. Welcome to Jeopardy. This is Jeopardy. <laughs> and now, here's your host, Dan Kerstetter. Thank uh, you. I mean, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is Jeopardy. All right. The game show that we present every time we have a guest. And our categories tonight are... Do we have any category music? Category... No, there's none. Mm. Categories are appetizers, mm. abbreviations, mm. great shipwrecks, planets and more, Ooh. warfare... Ooh. Roger, you're a challenger. Pick a category. Uh, planets and shit. Planets and shit. Planets and shit. <laughs> this planet is our so. This planet in our solar system is the hottest. Mercury. What is Mercury? What is Mercury? Oh, sorry. I, yeah, you have to make like yeah, a buzzer yeah. noise. Oh, I, didn't oh, tell really? I didn't know that. You have to make a buzzer noise. A buzzer okay, noise. Yeah, gotcha. So, yeah. Okay. All right. We'll give him another one. <laughs> well, since he won that one. All right. Okay. Roger, pick a category. Uh, the last one. Warfare? Yeah. This war had 72 different nations involved during its conflict. <laughs> Roger. Uh, the Hundred Nations War. Oh, <laughs> no, I am sorry. That is incorrect. The penalty is Jeff. What is World War Two? That is correct. All right. Jeff, pick a category. Uh, let's do warfare again. Warfare. This colonial war had two powers engaged in the colonies before the American Revolution. <laughs> the French Indian War. Roger. Yeah. <laughs> Roger, pick a category. <laughs> Was that correct? Yes. All right. Yes. Um, I don't know. What are the categories again? <laughs> I don't have a list like they do on the show. Yeah. Appetizers. I'll take appetizers. This dairy product is coated in deep fried and served with sauce. Uh, uh, cheese. Roger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is mozzarella cheese? Uh, judges, judges? Mozzarella. Uh, they will take it. We're All looking right. for mozzarella okay. sticks. Gotcha. Oh, sticks. Like, okay. Mozzarella okay. sticks. Yeah. Okay, well, you said for. this dairy product, so I thought, you know. Go mozzarella sticks. Right. Yes. Pick, sticks. pick a category. Sticks. Jeff, sticks. pick a category. Let's go with that again. Garlic bread, or grilled bread with garlic, olive oil, tomatoes, and sometimes cheese. 
Roger. Bruschetta. Bruschetta. That is correct. All right. Roger. Pick a category. Uh, what's the next one? Appetizers. Abbreviations. Abbreviations. Home box office. <laughs> HBO. Roger. <laughs> you got to wait, Raj. Man, jeez. I could tell he was going to call on me. Roger, pick a category. Uh, uh, abbreviations. NYSE. <laughs> Jeff. No, it was him. Roger. <laughs> New York Stock Exchange. <laughs> there you go. You're looking at the answers. <laughs> no, I'm not. Roger, pick a category. Uh, what's the next one? Appetizers, abbreviations, great shipwrecks. Great shipwrecks. Built in Ireland as part of the White Star line of ocean liners. <laughs> Roger. Titanic. What is Titanic? That what is, is Titanic? That is correct. Sorry. There you go. Roger, pick a category. Uh, shipwrecks. Torpedoed by the Germans in 1915. <laughs> Roger. Lusitania. What is Lusitania? That is correct. Lusitania. Roger, pick a category. Shipwrecks. Discovered in the Bermuda Triangle, adrift and abandoned in 1872. Do, do, do. The yeah. Mary Celeste. Ooh. Ooh. Mary's a slutzy. Uh, shipwrecks again. Roger, pick a category. Shipwrecks again. <laughs> you better stop getting these motherfucking questions, or I'm going to have to do something about that shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Concluding some terms with a couple of steel firms, she left fully loaded for Cleveland. <laughs> Ro- uh, Jeff. <laughs> what is the Edmund Fitzgerald? That is correct. Oh, Jeff, right, pick a great. category. Same one. Concluding some terms with a couple of steel firms. You just did that one. Yeah. <laughs> Jonas Grumby was a person in charge aboard this ship the day it disappeared. Jonas Grumby was the person in charge aboard this ship the day it disappeared. <laughs> Roger? What is the Flying Dutchman? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm sorry, that's uh, incorrect. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jeff, do you have a guess? Womp, womp, womp. Nope, nothing. What is the USS Minnow? Oh. Oh, the skipper's you're right. That was the real skipper's name real was Jonas name. Grumpy. Oh, yeah. Shit. Mm-hmm. Shit. Yeah. Damn. Uh, Fictional uh, shit. Jeff, pick a category. All right. Uh, let's do uh, abbreviations. Abbreviations. This abbreviation in the music industry means to start over. Don't know. Do do do. R two Z or R T R T Z. Return to zero. Return to uh, zero. Oh uh, yeah. Jeff, pick a category. Uh, let's do that again. Abbreviations. In modern day texting language, T Y T. Jeff. Talk to you later. Oh, do do do. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. What is talk to you later? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm st- that is still incorrect. Roger. <clears throat> Tell you later. I am sorry, that is incorrect. The answer we're looking for is take your time. Oh. Uh, take your time. T Y T. T Y T. Pretty young thing. I want to fuck you. T Y T. Oh wait a minute, that right. Jeff, pick a category. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's do abbreviations. The man from Uncle. Oh shit! I used to know this. I am sorry, that is incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, Roger. Ooh, Ooh sorry. Oh. sorry. <clears throat> Roger. What is United Negro College uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ladies uh, Enterprises? Ooh. Well, you were almost correct. United Network Command for Law and Enforcement. Oh, that's kind of a stretch. Oh, Jeff, wow. pick a category. Let's do the abbreviations again. That was it. Okay, let's do the shipwrecks again. Shipwrecks. Uh, that was done, too. Okay. Um, we have appetizers, abri- uh, planets and more, and warfare. Let's do planets and more. The largest ocean in entire planet is made of liquid hydrogen. No, wait, I'm sorry. Let me read. Whoa. Let, let Alec Trebek. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The largest ocean in this solar system is made of liquid hydrogen on this planet. What is Venus? That is incorrect. Okay. Jeff, you have a guess? Mm. Jeff. What is Jupiter? That is correct. All right. Nice. Jeff, pick a category. Let's do planets again. This moon of Jupiter is covered with volcanic eruptions. What is Titan? That is incorrect. Oh. Good guess. What is Io? That is correct. Nice. Jeff, pick a category. Uh, same one. Planets. This planet is home to the largest volcano in our solar system. Roger. What is Earth? No, incorrect. Jeff. What is Mars? That is correct. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, pick a category. All right. Uh, same one. Legend suggests this planet met its end by being superheated and exploding all in milliseconds. Legend suggests this planet met its end by being superheated and exploding all in milliseconds. Doot, doot, doot. What is Alderaan? 
<laughs> Damn it. Jeff, pick a category. I knew the answer to that, too. <laughs> it's just like that one where he's the weatherman up there, and he's like, if tonight on Alderaan, it's going to be 75, 75, and then 9, 9, 9, 9, all the way across. <laughs> You're right. about to have a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to suck. Uh, let's do the Planets Warmer. Uh, that was the last one. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Ah, we have Warfare and Appetizers. Let's do Appetizers. This layered vegetable is peeled, cut, dipped in batter, and deep fried, served with spicy 1000 Island sauce. Oh. Uh, Roger. That was mine. Oh, oh go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Call me, man. What are you doing? <laughs> Jeff. What is a cactus or a blooming onion? Blooming onion. Which is it? What is a blooming onion? Uh, 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 Roger, you want to elaborate or expand on that? <laughs> I was just going to say blooming onion. What is a blooming uh, onion? Well, but the judges are looking for onion rings. Oh, oh. Onion rings. Oh. But, but, they, they really can't argue with the blooming onion, Yeah, because it's very uh, close. Well, yeah. I, I very would, close. since it's going to him, I would argue with <laughs> what is a ring and what is a blue? That's right. But yeah. go ahead, give it to him. We Jeff, both answered the same thing. Jeff, pick a category. Uh, same thing. Meat served on the bone, usually from fowl. Jeff. What are chicken wings? We are looking for wing dings. So that oh, answer is correct. Incorrect. Uh, I'd like That's to a take font. issue with the judges because wing dings are actually fonts. Uh, they are fonts, yeah. but, but they're also not necessarily needed to be uh, chicken, chicken wings. It's just a uh, word to make you think, oh, these are chicken wings, but they could actually just be ground up chicken meat or the proverbial pink paste that uh, McDonald's uses. Yeah, actually, that's not true. You know that pink paste? You know what that is? Um, that's a Pepto Bismol uh, paste. <laughs> no, it's actually used in making a hamburger. I'll be darned. It's not chicken wings. Never. They try to say, oh, it's chicken nuggets. No, that's not what it is. Really? Yeah. It's When you get uh, hamburger meat, if you get like an 80 20 blend mm-hmm. or a yeah, 73 yes, 27, yes, it's fat. yeah, you see that, yes. that pink stuff in there. Yes. That's what it is. I'll be darned. It's the sliced and portioned fat off of beef, and then they mix it all together, and that stuff that's in between gets into it, and that's why it turns pink. Why hasn't McDonald's gone like on. Viral with it? I well, don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because they've got the money. I mean, bad press. There's no such thing as bad press. So right. I think well, that's what they're going okay, with. I, I know I'm eating the fuck out of nuggets right now, <laughs> dude. They, they they took out all the preservatives and oh, shit. Do you eat Chick Fil A? No, yeah, kind of. Oh my god, they're good. I know. We just had a thing about. I them mean, last they're week. not politically <laughs> correct, but they are so good. I know, right? That's, anyway, okay, we yeah, got Jeff. Yeah, Let's yeah please, all Jeff, right. pick a category. Uh, appetizers. This beef appetizer is usually served from the skin. From the Scandinavian variety. This beef appetizer is usually served from the Scandinavian variety. Mm-hmm. Roger? No. Mm-mm. Jeff? Don't know. What are Swedish meatballs? Oh, oh yeah. That's Jeff, right. pick a category. Uh, appetizers. This war is called and identified as the American War in the country it was engaged in. No, this is not an appetizer. We're done with appetizers. Oh, oh, say it okay. again then. <laughs> I was going to say, back to warfare. This war is called and identified as the American War in the country it was engaged in. <clears throat> Roger. Oh, uh, what is Vietnam? That is correct. Yeah. Roger, pick category. A war. This Trojan War was who versus who? Uh, <laughs> Jeff. The What is the Greeks and the Trojans? That is correct. Yes. That is correct. Jeff, mm-hmm. pick a category. Uh, that one. There's President, only that one. President Nixon declared war on this entity in 1971. <clears throat> Roger. What is Cambodia? Yeah, that is incorrect. Mm. Jeff. I don't know. Ooh, story. <laughs> we were looking for the war on drugs. Oh, oh no shit. That's right. He did start it. That's yeah. right. He turned Everybody. Elvis into a narc. Everybody, yeah. Everybody yes. thought it was Reagan, but yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, he just said no. He just amped it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. He just amped it up. And that concludes our, uh, what are we playing? Oh, Jeopardy. Jeopardy. That includes Jeopardy for this week. Tune in next time when we hear Alex say, Jeff, pick a category. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Final Jeopardy. Okay, fuck that. Anyway, <laughs> so we got a little bit more time here. Um, have you ever guys, uh, have you, how steeped in musical tradition are you? You're uh, Roger, because you've. You've got a lot of background with music stuff. Well, um, I know a little bit about everything, right. really. And uh, by my main focus, the thing that I love is songwriting. Okay. Which means that, like, a lot of crappy 
records out there now or right. really great songs have just been buried in the flavor of the month as far as uh, uh, vocal retouching or, or, or um, beats. That, Backtracks. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, if, if, if it comes out, if you can come out with an acoustic guitar or a piano and perform it, it sounds good. It's a great song no matter who does it. Right. So what, what are you asking? No, I'm just wondering about, you know, um, I know you do a lot of uh, stuff with music and stuff. Like, um, are you like, would you consider yourself uh, proficient or better at uh, like bands and, you know, things like that? Um, I'm a, a journeyman guitarist, meaning I've played in a lot of bands and gotten money for it. But right. I am no way a, a technically proficient virtuoso right which doesn't really interest me anyway i would rather hear albert king hit a note and just bend the shit out of it and sound, make it sound like a woman crying <laughs> in ecstasy right than hear a guy run bach you know at twice the speed yeah yeah so uh um, i'm not a big steve Vai fan huh <laughs> well no actually I, I i i have liked his stuff like the, the, his, you know the, the majestic david lee roth ears <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, I was asking because uh, we were talking about something a minute ago, and um, it made me think of uh, Pinkard and Bowden. You ever heard of them? Yes, I did. One took over the line. Yes, yes. yes. As a matter of fact, they Sweet did. Sweet Jesus. Uh, yeah, they did. Uh, they did quite a few songs. One of the ones was uh, uh, "Don't Pet the Dog." <laughs> Another one was uh, "Don't Eat the Yellow Snow." I've heard that one. Yeah. yeah. Don't eat the yellow snow. It was like country Don't you rock. Eat that yellow snow. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. Another really, really famous one they did was called Cheeseburgers in Paradise. I thought that was Jimmy Buffett. No. Or did he just cover it? He did. I think he did in well, Paradise. No, I thought that was Joni. No, yeah, no, it was um, Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers that did the original. Not Cheeseburgers in Paradise. It was something else in Paradise. But Pinkerton mm. Mountain did the did the the spoof version of it, I guess. Mm. Huh. Yeah. I just wondered if you guys had ever heard of them. Um, there's another. I. I used to listen to them quite frequently in the 80s because a friend of mine, one of my best friends, turned me on to it, and I just, you know, really, really sat down with the albums and started playing it. Um, right. But uh, one of the one of the concerts that I went to when I was actually younger, uh, because in the 70s, it was very bizarre to have a music teacher that gave a shit, okay? You either had band directors who were those people that would, like, push you to the very limit, making sure that your collars were tucked and your suit was well-pressed and your colors were good and... You know, things like that. Uh, so it was difficult to find a music teacher who actually gave a shit about teaching right. music. Mm -hmm. Well, it just so happens that I went to a school where they were doing a, a an all-original uh, music idea. And it was shaping children with music. And it's exactly the reason why I get into so much music. One of the bands they taught us about was is called um, the Kingston Trio. Oh, my God, yes. And I actually saw them in concert. The coolest event I probably have ever been to in really? all my life. Did they yeah. do Scotch and Soda, one of my favorite yes. songs? Yes, yes. And um, in the middle of uh, the one song that they do is, uh, oh, what the hell is it called? Uh, Charlie on the MTA. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, that man never got off the MTA. Right. Dude, back in the old days when they had the subways running, it cost you a nickel to get on the subway, and then it cost you a nickel to get off the subway. Okay. And this guy got stuck on the subway... And had no way of getting a nickel, so he never got off the subway. That's what the song's about. It's yeah. really funny. true. It cost you a nickel to he, get off the yes. subway. Yes, yeah. And he one rides it to this day. Right. Yes. <laughs> he really. He, he's not going to give you a seat. Forget it. <laughs> but but during the middle of that song, I watched a guitarist pop a string, continue playing, and restring his instrument. Yes. Right in the middle of doing it, and it was beautiful. By the time the song was getting ready to be over, he was back into playing again. I was yes. like. I was so astonished by seeing He didn't that. have a backup guitar. He just replaced the string. Right, exactly. exactly. On the fly. Well, I'm yes. sure he had a backup, but it was kind of a pain in the ass to take an acoustic guitar off, mm -hmm. put it away, and yes. then go get another one. I've been, I've been, I will have to credit my mom and my godmother for being those people who were behind me and being, pushing me towards music. Cool. Uh, I learned how to play the violin when I was six years old. Um, I played the trumpet and the saxophone after that. Uh, I didn't do those for very long. Uh, I played the music recorder. That's what really got me back into it because uh, schools actually started getting into that recorder process. Um, and then from there on, you know, I just loved the music. I played the spoons. <laughs> that's actually an instrument, that believe is, it or not. That is. You get to a jam band, that's that's actually that's a good thing to have. very important. If you can do that, that's really important. Yeah. Anything you can do with rhythm right. that has a percussive sound is very important very valuable yeah for folk music i mean it especially. sounds it sounds silly but no no you're right though you're right it, it, you can 
Well, you know, any talented musician can make just about anything a musical instrument. But, kind of. Uh, per- percussion is definitely where, where it starts. It all starts with the timing. Absolutely. So yeah, it's just like instruments. Yes. Just like you said last week about the girl, the, the ventriloquist. It's amazing that you can actually look at the the doll and be like taken aback that the doll is actually talking right. and alive, and that's yes. the way you feel. You, Same you, thing with yeah. the, the with instruments. You could take a pair of spoons, and if you play them the right way, people are not going to pay attention to the fact you're playing spoons anymore. You're just the tempo or the backbeat exactly. of the music. Exactly. You're the pulse of the music. Right. Exactly. I uh, relate to what you're saying about your musical influences, your mother right. and your godmother and everything, because for me, it was uh, teenage horniness. <laughs> I was such, such a hunger for pussy that I stood there until my fingers bled trying right. to learn a C chord. I know that feeling. <laughs> I played in bands there for a while with, with that same thought in mind that I'm going to... I'm going to go places. I'm going to get some pussy. And I'm a drummer. I can do that. I fortunately, pussy. I finally learned that, oh, music is really good by itself. Right, because right. The other angle wasn't working. <laughs> yeah, it really doesn't. You have to be really, really outgoing. And I just didn't have the game. Yeah. I, I used to play drums and be a lead singer of a band way, way, way back when. And Yeah, that just doesn't happen. No. no, not at all. Chicks don't come up to you and be like, oh, my God, you're so great. Well, I said that chicks did come up to me. Oh, they did? Uh, yeah, and they would say, would you introduce me to George, who was the, who was the pretty boy lead guitarist? <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, you just get all angry. And, and, yeah. Yeah, so. But yeah, um, what else you got, Dan? Uh, that That's really about it. All I got. That's it? That is it. Oh, man. I thought you were going to put the fun in the dysfunctional. <laughs> well, I put the fun in funeral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. We can go there and crack them the hell up. I didn't know I was going to do that. Um, what do you guys think of, um, just real quick, what do you guys think of uh, the televangelists? Because we've had a discussion before, um, not that long ago, about Peter Popoff who's this guy, you'll see commercials on, like if you go on the shitty networks or whatever, he gets commercials that come on and he's a real fat and old dude, he kind of talks like this and he's got jet black hair, mm-hmm. but he's like 90 years old. So you're yeah. like, motherfucker, you're a Grecian formula, we know, So or it's a wig, one or the other. Uh, but he comes on there and he's like, I'm going to send you my miracle spring water and it's going to change your life. And like all, all of a sudden you have, and I kid you not, it's majority black people Stand up and going, you said you're going to give me $23,000, and I got $23,000. And every single person that comes up says that. You said I was going to do well, I got $4,000, and then the next day I got $27,000 because of your miracle spring water. And every person that gets up on that commercial, you seriously, go on YouTube and watch one of the Peter Popoff commercials. That's all it is. Everybody's standing up being like, oh, I got money because Jesus blessed me, and, and now I got money. What? What kind that, of accent was that? A uh, black woman. Oh, was it? Yeah. Damn, I'm trying to think Lithuanian. <laughs> Where's it going? No, not quite like that. Um, well, televangelists. Yes. We used to watch, when I say we, my wife and I, every Sunday we would watch The Hour of Power. Oh, yeah. With uh, Robert Schuller. Schuller, yeah. How can you not love the man? He was like everybody's favorite grandfather. He was so <laughs> sweet. Plus, the scripture that they quoted were always the positive patches passages right they were always about good things that you're going to get th- good things that you're going to see <clears throat> prosperity gospel never about burning in hell or being stoned to death or the other parts that were like the second half of the verses they'd I'm stop sorry. they'd stop at the ellipsis where it says or don't do this did and you say stone to death i did say i that. think i'd like to do that <laughs> <laughs> no yeah i know what you're saying and yeah. uh at, at the same time we used to think really positive things about bill cosby <laughs> You're right about that. So, well, you know, okay. well, well, he was like America's dad. Yeah, you don't if he was molesting yet. you, <laughs> you know. I heard, had a conversation with my father last night, and I was surprised to hear him saying, I was reading about Bill Cosby. He was a piece of shit all along. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. You know, I, I had heard J.J. Walker say that um, back in the day, he just thought it was common knowledge that that's what Bill Cosby did with women. It was just so common knowledge back in the day that you knew you were going to get date raped. Really? In the in the comedy community, it was common knowledge. No shit, I didn't it, know that. It, it, uh, it didn't break until a few years ago when Hannibal Burris, this black comic, right. actually put yeah. him in, in his act as part of it. It's like, come on now, we all know he's a rapist. And then it started gaining traction from them. But for decades, people knew about it. Wow. Not you and I and... 
Right, but you people and I, in the know, yeah, people yeah, in the know. People in that in that comedy circle. Right. Right, <clears throat> right but he had so much power just through decades of uh, his various entertainment ventures that he was basically untouchable. He had to get old and feeble before anybody could make a dent. Gee, many Christmas. Years ago, that. years ago in the 80s, I read one of his books called Love and Marriage. Ah. And it was such a well-written book and yeah. it was really, really good advice. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now, we'll put it in perspective, it, he didn't mention anything about putting roofies in his wife's drink. <laughs> so, I got a great, great, great idea that you could put in something yeah. in this glass and give it to some people. She's like, Bill, it just gives me a headache. Just ask and I will give you the ass. <laughs> <laughs> don't, you don't it. have to put any shit on me. Just just ask. <laughs> if you want me to play dead, I'll play dead. But Bill Cosby is James Earl Jones. Give yourself to the dark side. <laughs> He's like, yeah, pull it over, man. No, that because that's the thing. We've always seen him as being something this this incredible person yes. that you know that yes. is just well beyond what we where we're at. His colleges were giving him doctorate degrees, and yeah, that exactly. It's so sweet and they're putting pups in the fat Albert. <laughs> oh yeah, nice. <laughs> Your destiny lies with these nuts. <laughs> yeah so but no yeah this that whole thing it just kind of messes me up and it's it's we thought that you know this guy was untouchable for the most part because it was and that's so weird that we like would automatically put somebody in that that realm and well, not know anything about them well we tend to do that with a lot of people we put yeah. we put oj simpson on the same pedestal right yeah and look what happened. Well, we used to, but we're white, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's like as soon as he got charged, we were like, that fucking guy did it. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. I know what you mean, though, exactly. That, there's tons and tons of other ones that are like that, too, where it's like you just think, you know, that these people, Phil Spector is a really great, at, you know, oh, yeah. Beretta, example. The guy yeah. who was in yeah. Beretta. Yeah, mm-hmm. Robert. Oh, um, Robert Blake. Blake, yeah. Yeah, Mickey Gubitosi. Yeah. What? That was his real name. Oh, really? Mickey Gubitosi. I wonder he fucking changed it. Yeah. I would have, too. Yeah. yeah, me, too. <laughs> My name hasn't always been Charles Bronson. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's now the mechanic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I think um, that that just took me it took me aback when it, this whole thing came to light. And now it's even worse that I, I hear that you that people kind of knew about it. It was almost like a like a like a tour thing, you know. <laughs> like, map to the stars over here. You're going to see, you know, uh, uh, Rock Hudson's house, and over here is Bill Cosby's. Be careful, he's gonna fuck you in the butt, you know. <laughs> well, Cosby is not unique, <clears throat> except that fact that he is a uh, uh, man <clears throat> of color who has been such a huge success. Right. But I mean, Kennedy. Look at the people throughout the decades that you. I mean, until. I was going to say until Watergate, but until social media, people just looked the other way. Yeah. I mean, anybody of a significant power and or money were untouchable. It's just like, okay, well, just shut up and put up with it. It's right. just the way it is. Yeah. It happens to everybody. Look, honey, I'm sorry. I realize he raped you in the ass, but honey, come on now. You're six years old. Be a grown-up. <laughs> Be a grown-up and live with it. <laughs> oh, jeez. This is horrible. <laughs> you guys are the yeah. worst. I know. We're the worst. We bring out the worst <clears throat> in people. I know. We try to. <laughs> It is like a, it's like a, it's like a Bill Cosby thing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. He tries to rape the women. We try to get the worst in people. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling you're going to be the death of me? I know. <laughs> so anyway, uh, oh yeah, I had a couple things. Um, hang on here. Let me know, go hunting it down. T- t- talk about amongst yourselves. I'm proclaimed. Okay, let's play sound effects. <clears throat> sound effects. You, you like sound effects? Mm. This is my favorite. Oh, oh right. I love that. Wait, yeah. Actually, I like doing this. That's good too. He yeah. shot from over there, or or this one. Ah! Oh. <laughs> do you do you have the uh, somebody eating potato chips? Oh, you know what? No, no, oh, we don't. Good, good. <laughs> That's supposed to be something that either turns people on or turns people off. I mean, for me, I don't really like it. But but do you ever hear what is it? Uh, ADSR or something like that? It's yeah. a, it's a therapy where certain noises around like people chewing gum or people eating chips or or just the whisper of a fabric or something like that is either really soothing or really torturous and people will either listen or isolate themselves from that sound right depending on whatever their stupid therapeutic need is 
Um, but anyways, the chips thing, I, I, it's like a love haze, like nails on a blackboard. I love it because people just hate it. But if I had to listen to it all the time, I'd probably shoot it, myself. Is it the chewing and what people hate, or is it the bag? No, it's not the bag. It's the the wet crunch. You know, it's like a wet crunch. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> like cereal, breakfast cereal, dips doused in milk. Mm, mm. So, gentlemen, we're looking for a cereal killer that targets Asians by chopping them up throughout the hotel. It's Ooh. very, very Wong on so many levels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it threw out the whole level of the building. Yeah, Asians yeah. chopped up the Wong. <laughs> Yeah. See, that's the thing, man. And that's the one thing I think in the world that needs to change. Hopefully people will eventually get to that point where they realize that you can make fun of just about anything, just for any reason whatsoever. And, you know, I took a picture of a woman who was on an advertisement apparently for the Ohio um, Department of Transportation where they were talking about don't text and drive. Mm. And, of course, they're showing this video at a fucking... um, (laughs) uh, uh, a resort like place where they have like go karts and you know kid stuff you know uh, arcades and you walk over to this one corner and there's a TV set there and it's saying don't get distracted don't drive distracted and then they show on this TV a repeating loop and this woman who is now a woman she was a child when, when this initially happened to her yeah. uh, but her mom was texting and got into a car accident her mom's okay but she got her, half her head's like missing mm. Right, so they had to reconstruct like that part of her head, and it's a very sound, you know, a very sad story. Mm. And I look at that woman, and I actually took a picture of her. Um, yeah, I mean, not to be a dick, you know, I was kind of like, well, I just, you know, I wanted to say, you know, if this, <laughs> if this person, you know, were right in front of me, I wouldn't be able to say anything about them, you know. And and even now, I'm not going to say anything about her because. It's, I don't know, it's just rude. It's something where I bet she gets teased a lot now. Mm-hmm. And that upsets me. Mm-hmm. I mean, that bothers the shit out mm-hmm. of me. She was a good-looking woman. And the, although one quarter of her face is reconstructed, she's still a good-looking woman. Mm-hmm. Um, but people don't focus on that. They focus on the little teeny tiny, you know, a- aesthetics. Hey, on dented head. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. They just make the, and it, that's cruel. That's cruel. And mm-hmm. I'm not into that. I'm really right. not into Absolutely that. So not. on the Jeff and Dan show, you'll never hear me talking about a paraplegic. Okay, yeah, I will. Uh, <laughs> quadri- no, I will that too. But that, um, that woman. Is somebody's probably, been in a car accident. It's all. Oh, no, I'll do uh, that is too. it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That woman is probably a Perry County supermodel. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got to show you guys the picture because, uh, yeah, it's it's bad. She got hurt bad, but it was in Ohio apparently. Uh, so, yeah. speaking of chimpanzees, mm-hmm. that woman that uh, had her face and she was blinded, and her face was torn apart, and her fingers were bitten off, and her toes were bitten off. You remember that a few years ago? Wow. Her friend had a chimpanzee as a pet. It was like six feet tall. It was an old chimpanzee. Oh, my God. It would drive the car for her. It was really cute. The whole thing it was like another human being. It was great. Well, she had her girlfriend over, and the girlfriend said or did something or farted, moved her skirt or dropped her purse or whatever, and it sent the chimp off, and it attacked her, yeah. and it blinded her, and it ripped her apart, and it cut her... Bit, his, bit her fingers off and stuff and and uh, after a year or two she was on Oprah to speak out against uh, chimpanzees I don't know but they actually showed she had like a veil on her first and she took it off and it was so horrible yeah. I have hated Sibian since then except gorillas gorillas yeah. are pretty chill I mean, yeah until no you go to the it. zoo and they fucking charge you it's yeah, really weird yeah. Mm, yeah oh yeah. yeah she's nice yeah, yeah. see she's not bad looking yeah, yeah it's yeah. just that quarter of her head is you know and I, and I feel bad for her because it wasn't her fault. You know, if right, it had been a situation absolutely. where they're like, oh, well, she was texting. I'd be like, well, bitch, you deserved it. Mm-hmm. You know, right, but it ain't exactly. that. She got it. Yeah. Know, so, mm-hmm. yeah. But, but now then, she's a tool for the uh, for, anti-texting yes, media, exactly. which is fine because I, I, I can't um, stand when people text while they're... I, I know you do. You probably uh, love it. <laughs> you probably text with your feet while you're... God, driving. he's just throwing all kinds of accusations <laughs> at you. Wow, I just said, what, what are you, spying through my phone now? <laughs> <laughs> The NSA. <laughs> yeah, the Roger NSA. Mm. So anyway, um, yeah, I uh, I think uh, we're just about done. Well. 
I well, think hey, guys, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. Dude, it was enjoyable having you down. Right. We'll, we'll definitely do this I, again. I, I yeah. would absolutely love to. Yeah, Thanks I know. for coming down. Thanks well, for thank coming you down. Thank you for bringing me down. Well, hey, my pleasure. Yeah. And so. we will do this again. Great. Yes, sir. All yep. right. Yep. Here we go. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, and other Force listeners, it is time to call it a night. While we all here have enjoyed our time with you, it's time for us to go. It's not that we are bored or don't have anything to talk about. It's just that our studio is in a gas station bathroom, and the manager is kicking us out. Get the fuck out! I think he needs to take a poop. Can I poop? We would like to thank our guest, Roger Arnold, for taking the time and dropping by and playing our little game. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. Thank you. And as always, it has been our pleasure having you visit with us, and we thank you very, very much for tuning in. And we hope to see you here next week, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, jeffanddan.com. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good night and a great week. All right. All right. Yeehaw!